Hello, friends. Welcome in, one and all. It is the Matt Murphy Radio Show for another day, 1204. May I be the first to say a good afternoon to you and yours. Hope you're doing well on this Wednesday, October 18, 2023. It is our episode 437 of the Matt Murphy Radio portion of the broadcast day on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I am Matt Murphy. I'm the host of these proceedings, and I thank you for being here. Whatever time you're able to give us, we're certainly appreciative of that. Mac Mori will be back in the newsroom before you know it, delivering headlines for you back there. Bell K, we lovingly refer to him as Headless Bell for reasons that I will explain to you in moments, is behind the glass making sure that everything that comes out of our speakers sounds as good as humanly possible. We have a number of platforms to tell you about, a number of ways for you to communicate with the broadcast. You can dial us up via the old school telephone. The old... How many people do you think still have home telephones? As I squirrel myself. By the way, afternoon, Bell. Hope you're hey, well. Squirrel. I uh I don't I haven't checked, but I would bet money it's probably less than fifteen percent at this point. Fifteen? Fifteen one five? Boy, that's low, man. I would have gone twenty five percent, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm dated. Who knows? One way or the other, you can uh, grab the telephone. Thirty four percent. Say so, there you go. I mean, I, only fifteen percent of renters, though. Well, why would you? Yeah, I was fascinated when I rented a home. I did not realize how technology had advanced to the point. You know, you're in a house for some amount of time, and you become set in your ways. And I had cable, and yeah. you know, I have every television plugged into the little cable thing in every room that there's a television and whatever. And I had the internet box, and then I had the Wi-Fi. Well, now I've got one box. I've got Xfinity, and you get the one tower that's plugged into one thing, and everything else is smart technology that is wireless. Everything else in my house. My computer, obviously the telephone, my, my you know, handheld, every television that runs, every everything that runs via the Xfinity deal runs wirelessly, which I don't, maybe it makes me old that I'm fascinated by this, but I'm kind of fascinated by this. Yeah, we're old. Okay, we're old. Uh, well, the two old guys will be here until 3 o'clock. When the older guy comes along, Brian Wilson, and the drive from 3 until 7 o'clock, the young guy just left. That was Chris Hand, and the nerdy guy was here this morning. That's Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mandis. That's your lineup, information-fueled and opinion-driven on News Talk on uh, Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Find us on Super Talk TV, the FNM Bank chat line. You can see me in my fetching uh, top. FNM Bank chat line's up and running. You can talk there. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. It is episode 437 there as well. And today's episode is entitled... Oh, I'm on the wrong screen. Oh, it that's is. an odd title. That's the oddest title you've ever come up with. Oh, I'm on the wrong Matt screen. <laughs> Matt Murphy, live from the Gaza Strip and Kiev at the same time because we can afford two wars. Well, that's right. We can afford two wars and... It would be inappropriate to get funding for Israel. Well, one, I don't think Israel needs funding. Secondarily, we fund them constantly. But that's right, and we've already funded them to the tune of three point three billion dollars for this next fiscal year. We did. Marco Rubio passed this a number of years ago. He was the champion of this, where their funding now does not have to singularly be re-upped on an annual basis. It's naturally a reoccurring funding mechanism. Three point three billion dollars going to israel now look i support israel i stand with israel israel and their population they are the good guys in this conflict but they don't need any more of our money but that doesn't stop the Biden administration from demanding that we borrow money against our children our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren's futures i mean what the hell does biden care he'll be dead and when a couple of years i don't wish that it's a reality now, see, that's the scary thing about him getting reelected. And again, I don't wish him death either, but the man is is elderly. That's that's a fact. That's undeniable. Listening to him when he landed in Israel and what he said after landing in Israel, the nonsense that was coming out of his mouth and the level of or the lack of energy that he had. I need to get him into Nashville, get him over to the Tennessee Men's Clinic, see if we can't fix him up. I don't think they could help him. I think some people are too far gone. I'm sure Jill would appreciate the efforts. Or maybe not, depending on what that situation might be. 
One way or the other, you can watch or listen on a number of different platforms as we finish up the pleasantries and get this thing lumbering under its own weight. We thank you for doing so. You can find us on social media at Matt Murphy Show on just about every platform that's out there. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, you know, the whole nine yards. And obviously, we invite you to communicate with the broadcast in any manner of your choosing. 615-737-9986. That's the telephone number, and that's the super text line. 615-737-9986. Uh, let's see. Someone's asking me, can you explain what you mean by the Chinese already have police stations here in America? Well, I think that's probably something that Chris Hand has said, and he was here until noon and he left, and now he's on his way to Murfreesboro to enjoy his afternoon. Uh, I will allow him to speak for himself, but I would say I will explain it to you in this way. The Chinese already have police stations here in the United States of America. They tried to put one in Times Square, and they got shut down. When it was discovered, I think they got busted. They had already had one up. They opened these, quote unquote, consulates, and they're ultimately police stations uh, where, anyway, I feel like Joe Biden. I'm halfway through a sentence. And if you're halfway through a sentence and you don't know the next word that's supposed to come out of your mouth, do the Joe Biden and say, anyway. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Explains everything, right? Explains everything. Uh, In the meantime, we're watching junior high school students. Uh, on the floor of the House of Representatives, or at least it seems so, uh, as the U.S. House Speaker vote has concluded with what? Nobody uh, will be the next speaker for the foreseeable future. Are they having another vote today? I don't know. He lost uh, two more votes today than he had yesterday. You know, Andy Ogle said this morning on Nashville's Morning News, and Andy will be with us tomorrow, I believe it is. It's either today or tomorrow, and I I probably should know which one that is, considering that I'm the host of this show. Uh, But Andy will be up to tell us. We were expecting Mark Green today. Mark Green will not be here. I'm not saying this. I'm just saying this because it's a reality. I don't see Andy on the calendar. When I schedule Mark Green to be on this show, it is even money that he's never going to be on this show. Because unlike every other congressman that we schedule to be on this show, something seems to come up. I'm not besmirching the guy. I'm not casting aspersions. I'm telling you the truth that we try to schedule the 7th Congressional District Congressman from the state of Tennessee with regularity, and when we do get him on the schedule, odds are, quote, something will come up. And I, if I sound a little frustrated, it's because I am, because I don't understand. I don't, part of me wonders if the people of the 7th Congressional District are a priority. Because it's not me. Does does him having a... He's uh, talking to, it's you. Does having that chairmanship uh, require more of his time out of a day than an average representative? Yeah, so the average representative works about, I don't know, an hour and a half a day, and the chairman would work about, I don't know, three, four hours a day, Dude, maybe. That's, okay, right there. That's like, um, that's what's that, four times the amount of work? I mean, you got to cut the guy a break. Well, look, it is what it is. I, once again, I'm not making enemies out of friends. I just... We, every week, uh, I'll just pull back the curtain. And, and I, once again, I'm not important here. I am not important. And I promise you, I mean that when I say that. I am not important. You are important. Speaking to you is important. And by some sort of blessing or curse, I have a platform by which a lot of 7th Congressional District constituents li- uh, listen. And it's an opportunity to speak to those constituencies and you know, most Congress people take you up on that opportunity, and Mark Green does when he has the time. It just seems that he doesn't have a lot of time. He's an incredibly, incredibly uh, busy person, and I appreciate him. I appreciate his service. I appreciate his service in Congress. I appreciate his service in the military. I appreciate the fact that he's a doctor, et cetera, et cetera. And the last time we had him on, his phone went in the crapper, and we ended up not being able to hear most of what he was saying. Correct. And by the way, don't you, I I am better on the calendar than I've been since we've been here, and you're still. Well, that's undeniable, but that still doesn't make it good. <laughs> Ridiculous. When's the last person you scheduled to be on this show? Executive producer K. I mean, if you want to, if you want to fuss uh, and fight, if you want to have a. Uh, DeSantis. A- <laughs> they, they called us. You jerk. That's true. I think think that's I started that process. I think that's you. I do believe that you did do DeSantis, but that's a long time ago. Where's my Vivek Ramaswamy interview, pal? You know what? You get ready, 
Bell, you're in for a problem. Mm. Get ready, Mary. Bell. You're going to in for a problem. You're going to in for a problem. That's correct. Um, I have made a tactical mistake in my clothing choices. If you're watching on Super Talk 99.7 WTN, before we get into the meat and potatoes of the broadcast, let me just complain for a moment. So this morning, early this morning, I thought that it would be cooler than it actually is. And now I'm, I'm in winter attire or at least late fall attire when I should not be. And it's 187 degrees in the studio. And that is on me. So that means my mood will decidedly change over the course of the broadcast from one of pleasant companionship, which is our normal state of being on the Matt Murphy show, to disgruntled curmudgeon. I'm kind of pitching to the left a little mm -hmm. bit. That's me. Um, Cameron Smith coming up at 2 o'clock this afternoon. Outside of Mark Green, that was our only scheduled guest, and Mark Green has canceled on us, so there you go. Bill Haggerty, who never cancels, is on tomorrow. Senator Bill Haggerty will be with us, and I believe Andy will be on with us tomorrow because I think I tried to space Andy out because I thought that Mark Green would be here today. And we wanted to talk to as many Middle Tennessee representatives as we possibly could, especially considering that we don't have a Speaker of the House and the House cannot function without a Speaker of the House. The vote today, I don't know what it was. One way or the other, it it was 199 for Jordan, 212 for Jeffries, and 22 others. Voting for, someone apparently voted for John Boehner at some point. John Boehner. What an absolute joke. Republicans cannot get out of their own way. It is an embarrassment. Look, everybody wants to scream about rhino this and rhino that. They're all Republicans. I'm not in club Republican. You tell me what you want to do about these Republicans that can't get the job done. I'm on record as saying that it's time for the moderates to concede a little bit to get a lot. There is no other candidate being proposed other than Jim Jordan of Ohio and Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Tell me who you want. Tell me who you want. Matt, we know all of these guys are terrible except my guy. My guy's good. Your guy's not not so good. But you uh, need to vote your guy out. My guy's okay. But your guy, in some cases, your guy is John Boehner. Your guy is Steve Scalise, who withdrew his name from consideration. So where is that going? That's just a lot of children with their lips pooched out. Look, figure it out. Be grown people. Tell them what you want. If it's going to be a quid pro quo, tell them what you want and let's move on with it. So Jordan attempts to win over the remaining holdouts. He lost 20 Republicans yesterday. He loses 22 today. There were 22 others today, as predicted by Andy Ogles this morning on Nashville's Morning News with Dan Mandis. There would be more holdouts today than fewer so we're, we're sliding in the wrong direction. If this ends up going back to Kevin McCarthy, my goodness. The country deserves whatever hell comes next. I have hopes and I have a belief that ultimately you will have a Speaker Jim Jordan. But I also don't believe that Jim Jordan is going to be the savior that some of you think he's going to be. Some of you believe that the Speaker of the House enjoys certain levels of responsibility or certain levels of power that the Speaker of the House simply doesn't have. The Speaker of the House doesn't get to overrule the will of the body. And there are still plenty of squishes in the Republican Party. And the Democrats are off the reservation. They're socialists. They wouldn't know Representative Republic if it hit them in the head. So we got that going on in Washington, D.C. We'll continue to cover it for you as best we can. And then there's this. The narrative, not just 24 or 36 hours ago. As of 9.55 this morning, major media outlets in the United States of America were still reporting. As of 9.55 Central Time, three hours ago, or no, not even three hours ago, two and a half hours ago. Media outlets were reporting that the Israelis, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, 
had shot a hospital, had bombed a hospital, and killed some 500 innocents, innocent Palestinians, innocent doctors, innocent nurses, individuals that were attempting to administer aid and care to suffering Palestinians were killed, were slaughtered in mass by the IDF, the Israeli people, the Israeli government. That's what we were immediately told by our mainstream media networks like Hashtag Never CNN, what a garbage network full of garbage people spewing garbage. MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC, all of the other alphabet soups, Washington Post, New York Times at all. Fox News, for what it's worth, a little more balanced in their coverage as they reminded us that whatever information we got on the initial front of this story, we got from Hamas, and Hamas cannot be trusted. So the same organization that these same media networks were calling terrorists and evil, slaughterers of innocents, 36, 48 hours later, they just believe them when that same organization comes out and says, that the Israelis bombed a hospital. Regardless of how you believe the Israeli people think about the Palestinians, know this, Israel has known for decades. Do you know what the worst thing that can happen in their effort to root out Hamas is that they kill innocent people? And they know that, whether they want to or not. If their ultimate objective is peace and a state of being that is without violence or terrorism in their midst, the worst way to attempt to advance that goal is to kill innocent Palestinians. It makes no sense. Even if they hate them, it makes no sense. So by any measure... Any bombing of any hospital would have been a mistake had it come from the Israelis. But it did not take long to dispel this myth that the Palestinian people or Hamas, depending on how you look at it, were spewing across major media networks. And those networks, I don't blame Hamas because I believe Hamas is an evil terrorist organization. Evil terrorists will do evil terrorist things. But I do Damn sure blame ABC, CBS, NBC, hashtag never CNN, and the rest of these garbage media outlets in the United States of America that spewed this nonsense and inflamed the passions of supporters of Palestine, of the Palestinian people across America and across the globe without any factual basis behind their reporting, except to say Hamas says. So here's how that reporting goes. It's Matt Murphy from the CNN News Desk. We now have information that Israel has bombed a hospital, killing as many as 500 people, doctors, nurses, and innocent Palestinian people looking for health care. That bombing coming at the hands of the IDF, comma, Israel did this, Hamas says. So very few people hear or care the Hamas says part, and they run with it. And now there are people in the world that will believe this for the rest of time when it wasn't true. Fact is, the hospital was never bond, bombed to begin with. A bomb went off beside the hospital. Quick question. Let's, uh, let's ask a quick question before our first break uh, to test your knowledge about the history of Palestinian and Israeli conflict. Where do Palestinians hide their bombs? Where, do, where does Hamas hide and where do they hide the rockets and the bombs and the guns? High population targets. Like? Hospitals. Hospitals. Apartment schools, buildings. Apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. They hide. And historically, this is not in dispute, folks. They hide behind innocent civilians. Would it not surprise you to know, or would it surprise you to know, that they were hiding munitions in the parking garage next to the hospital? I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying it wouldn't surprise me if that's what happened. 
what the Israelis say happened is that the Palestinians shot off a rocket and it misfired and it hit the hospital or next to the hospital, the parking lot. 1224, Super Talk 99.7 WT and just getting warmed up on episode 437. Back in a moment. Hey, folks, for many of you, you're in open enrollment season when it comes to your health care. And there are really kind of two kinds. There's one for people and one for small businesses uh, that have to buy their own medical insurance. The other is for those eligible for Medicare. Well, Pat Davis and his team at YourHealthPlanMan.com can help you with both of these. I want you to call Pat because he is a concierge of health care. He can assist you in figuring out and navigating the maze of health care options for you. When planning health insurance for you and your family, you need to consult with an expert. Health insurance is complicated and everyone's situation is different. Pat Davis and his team at Your Health Plan Man has been helping people get the right coverage at the best rates for years. And they have a variety of different plans to choose from. They're not locked into one plan. They're not locked into one company they use multiple companies and you'll see this when you go on their website most people that buy their own health insurance don't have the right coverage it is just a fact or they don't even know what coverage they have or worse um well the worst time to find out is when you need it that and that's the bottom line talk to pat and his team right now today and they will lay out a strategy in terms of um what you have what you can have and they'll help you understand how to get where you want to be go to your health that's your health or give them a call today and i have that number for you it is 855-475-2662 that is 855-4 the number four plan man 855-4 plan man for your health Hey, folks, Matt Murphy here. 
for Safe House. Nashville Safe House has been providing incredible opportunity for you to secure those things that protect you and your family in a safe fashion. We're talking about gun safes, obviously, but we're also talking corporate safes. If you own a business and you need something to lock up the valuables in that business on a regular basis, you need to talk to Mark and his team at the Safe House. If you have important things that you want to keep secure from theft or from fire, don't hide them in a box under your bed or in a closet or in a drawer. There's no better way to secure your valuables than to purchase a quality safe from Nashville Safe House. They have well over 200 safes on display, on display, and they have more safes in their warehouse. I um, I asked Mark the last time we were there for a count, and he said by his count at that time they had 600. Now, they have Browning. Uh, they have Fort Knox. They have Champion. They have Rhino. They have any safe uh, manufacturer that you can think of. They've got them any shape, any size ready to go, ready for delivery. And yeah, they charge for their delivery, but they don't lie about it and add it to the price of the safe because it costs money to deliver something like that. So ask Mark and his team how they can help when you stop by Nashville Safe House. They're on 4th Avenue South, right across from City Cemetery, or better yet, go to NashvilleSafeHouse.com. That's NashvilleSafeHouse.com. Disrobing in the studio as we speak. I, um... Boy, I picked, I mean, it's this time of year where I get, uh, I get winter clothes in the spring because they're on sale then and they sit in the closet all winter long and I look at them and I think, man, that's going to be cool to pull out. And I pulled one out today. If you were watching on Super Talk TV, you've saw, or you've seen it. And I, I just looked at the label, Bell. It's, uh, it's called 32 Degrees. That's the name of the company. Like because that's how cold it's supposed to be when you wear it. They're branding themselves on man when it is super duper cold. This is the item you want on your body, and it is not. It is not. I repeat, super duper cold in the studio. I dressed inappropriately. I'll be down to the skivvies before you know it. I will not still be here by the time you get to that point. I mean, got to do what you got to do. 615-737-9986. We'll get to calls in a moment. Hank is in there. Betty, you too. Your phone call, 615-737-9986. Two talk speakers race. And I'll give you the latest narrative regarding Hamas and Israel. And I, I just have a, a quick question that I had on Monday that I want to re-up for this Wednesday. All over the United States of America, and I'm being sincere when I ask this question. If you are center left on this issue or whatever your political persuasion is, if you're of the predisposition that you want to, quote, free Palestine, okay? I want to know what that means. I sincerely want to know what that means. What do you mean? I see it all over the country where they're holding signs. Free Palestine, free Palestine, all over the world. Free Palestine, free Palestine. What does that mean? What does that mean to you? What specifically do you want to happen when you say free Palestine? More in a moment. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Hey, everybody. Dan Mattis with Nashville's Morning News on WTN. I'm here at the Nashville Rescue Mission doing the interviews that I look forward to doing every single year. These are incredible stories of people who have had amazing recoveries. Thanks to this amazing facility, they are able to get clean and lead a more productive life. The date of our annual Radiothon is going to be Monday, November 20th. Listen in and please donate. You can get more information at 99.7 WTN, including a link to the website for Nashville's Rescue Mission. There are two locations to serve you at the Tennessee Men's Clinic. One has been in Midtown for almost three decades now. The other just opened this year in Cool Springs. That's in Franklin. The Tennessee Men's Clinic wants no excuses when it comes to getting you your numbers that you need to know, gentlemen, in order to make sure that you are as healthy as you can be. And there are numbers that you should know. I mean, you know, you should know your blood pressure. You should know your cholesterol. You should know if your heart's doing okay, and you should also know your T-levels. And if you don't know any of those numbers, they can affect your overall health. They can affect your energy. They can affect your motivation, your drive, in a lot of different ways. The Tennessee Men's Clinic wants to appeal to you, friends, men specifically, 
Call them. Make the appointment. It does not cost a lot of money to get information that can either offer you peace of mind. Sometimes they tell you, you know what, it looks like you need more sleep. Uh, you, it looks like you need this or that that doesn't involve um, dealing with your tea. But if you need to deal with that, they're the company to work with Tennessee Men's Clinic. Go to TennesseeMensClinic.com to find out more. That's TennesseeMensClinic.com. Or call them, 615-208-9090. 208-9090. Tennessee Men's Clinic. Is Joe Biden out of Israel already? I think that's the case. I mean, I understand it's um, it's approaching evening in Israel now, but um, I think Joe Biden is already gone out of Israel. It's just fascinating to me that he shows up, does nothing, leaves, and we pretend like something was accomplished. What about you convince the rest of the Middle Eastern world to stay out of this while Israel deals with their terrorist problem in their midst. Secondarily, I asked a question earlier, and I will re-up it, and then we'll get to calls. I'm, I'm very curious if we have anyone in the listening audience. I'll give you uninterrupted time to explain to me what you mean by free Palestine. I'm, I'm sincerely curious. I don't understand what the Israelis are supposed to do, what America is supposed to do, what the rest of the world is supposed to do to free something that doesn't really exist. Palestine doesn't exist. One could argue the Palestinian people exist, but the state of Palestine doesn't exist. There are territory. The West Bank is controlled by the Palestinian Authority. That's the closest you got. Hell, Gaza is not even controlled by the Palestinian Authority. Hamas beat out the Palestinian Authority the last elections they held. So what do you mean when you say free Palestine? I'm just curious. 615-737-9986. Hank is first up this afternoon. Hey, Hank, how are you? Uh, hey, Matt. Uh, actually, I kind of feel to... Oh, wait, you're not... Yeah, yeah. 
No, you're not Hank. No, it's Hank's dad, Larry. How you doing, Larry? I'm hanging in there, brother. Uh, first of all, to free Palestine, I'd like to see Israel nuke Hamas until they glow. And if uh, Iran actually sends missiles to Israel, I have no doubt that Israel will drop a tactical nuke on Tehran. And then for Mark Green, I had been fighting with Social Security for two years. And I called his office here in Clarksville late one Thursday. His Washington office called me Friday mor- the next Friday morning at 830. And all of a sudden, Social Security is listening. So I, I know he's busy. I know, you know. Well, that's great. I under, I, well, I, I mean, I understand, you know, the frustration. I understand all that, brother. But uh, he does do good work. Well, I'm not I'm not casting aspersions at Mark Green. I'm just letting folks know if you don't hear from Mark Green on the show, it's not for a lack of us trying to get his voice to the seventh congressional district particularly into tennessee more broadly it is because we do these schedules it takes a while to do them normally it takes me two weeks to get something on the calendar and more often than not after i work to get something on the calendar with congressman mark green they either have to reschedule or his schedule fills up to the point that he cancels that's all i mean i'm not i'm not i'm not casting aspersions against him i'm just I'm relating the reality of what we deal with behind the scenes. I understand, brother. I understand. And and uh, I've, I've been up since 2 this morning, and I was forced to listen to Mandis on Red Eye Radio. And then... <laughs> I mean, and, and Dan, Dan, Dan does a great show. job. Dan, Dan does a great job with Red Eye Radio. I think nine hours of Dan Mandis it, uh, is a little too I, much, but that's just me. Well, I, I know he does, and then I had to listen to him, you know, five to nine. Then I had to listen to Chris Hand, and you know, now I got to listen to you, and then I got to listen to Brian. I mean, at some point, man, I got to sleep. Well, don't sleep till three. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> I won't, brother. I love <laughs> you, man. Have a good day. Thanks a lot, man. That's a lot, Amanda's. If you got up at two in the morning. That's three hours on Red Eye Radio. Then there's another four hours on Nashville's Morning News. Nine hours of Mandis in a row. That is considerable Mandis. I I mean, I love me some Mandis. But that's a lot of Mandis. Betty is in Nashville with a thought on the speaker's race. Betty, thank you for calling. Thank you for waiting. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, ma'am. Anyhow, I only really have one thing to say. And it's to all them Republicans sitting up there on there, you know what? Get your act together. That's why we can't get nothing through, because nobody has their act together. Quit acting like you're two. Get your crap together, because we're tired of this and these two-year-olds wanting their way. That's all I got to say. I love it, Betty. Thank you for saying it, and you are right on target. Get your act together. Miss Betty says to you Republicans in Washington, D.C., to get your act together. For goodness sake. Jim Jordan, for those just joining us in the Libertarian Lunch, has lost the second vote for for House Speaker. He lost um, a couple of votes that he had yesterday for some reason. Why would you vote for Jim Jordan the first time around and then not vote for him the second time? Or or did he lose votes? I don't know. He lost two votes. Do we know who? Why would you vote for Jim Jordan yesterday and not vote for him today, except that you're a child and you're acting like a child? These are spoiled brats. We deserve better than this, America. We deserve better than this. It occurs to me, however, I was thinking about this last night and I woke up thinking about it this morning. The way that we treat the speaker's vote is indicative to me of how we have been brainwashed. 
And I'll start this conversation this way. Intentionally to annoy some of you. Ready? We have way too many government workers in the United States of America. Way too many. The vast majority of you would not notice a government shutdown if it hit you in the head. Because you don't depend on the government on a regular basis. And one of the reasons that our government officials, our elected leaders, and the bureaucracy, the deep state, the swamp in Washington, D.C., one of the ways they've convinced us that this is so important is because of the number of government workers that do get a paycheck from the United States of America, the taxpaying citizens. We have way too many government workers indicating that we depend far too much on government to do things that the private sector would often do far better than the bureaucracy in D.C. I mean, I think we've been brainwashed to believe that our livelihoods would cease to exist if the government did not do all of these different things that really the government doesn't have any business doing to begin with. The various entitlement programs, the various entanglements that we see the government entering into federal and to state all of the various bureaucracies and bureaucratic agencies that are involved in our daily lives i woke up this morning wondering if we should care this much about government because when the government shut down at least they're not spending or overspending our money When I started doing this job 24 years ago, we didn't talk about the government every day. Believe it or not. We seem to now. Why? Your daily lives are affected far more by what happens with your local city councils or should be. Your local city councils, your local county commissions. What your region of the state's doing, what your state's doing. I mean, that is the way that it was designed to be. Yet we, we find ourselves in a place on October 18th, 20, and I hope I'm making sense. We find ourselves in a place on October 18th, 2023, where I'm being told, we've got to get the government running again so we can get $100 billion to Ukraine and to Israel and to the southern border. It's fascinatingly misplaced, these priorities. Just a random thought from Murphy to you. Doc is next in Bowling Green. Hey, Doc, how are you? How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Glad you called. What's on your mind? Well, how about a convention of state? Everything love, you just I'd love to see everything it. Everything you just said. Everything you just said could happen just like that. Mm-hmm. Well, let's talk about, uh, we've been talking let's talk about, about a, we've been talking about a, everybody, you know, a convention of states talking about a convention of states reminds me of talking about the weather doc. Like everybody talks about it, but nobody does anything about it. Like, well, we do have more uh, Republican governors do we, than we do have Democrat governors. Do we not? Yeah. And what are they doing? Exactly my point. Now, uh, Israel or the speaker of the house, which one would you like to talk about first? Uh, dealer's choice, let's say Israel. Israel, same thing. The uh, Palestinian people are nothing but pawns in a chess game because Egypt won't take them, Jordan won't take them, Saudi Arabia won't take them. So that's where I'm at a loss at. I'm at a loss for words for that. If, if, if it's such a big crisis and it's a humanity, uh, yeah, uh, well, I'm sorry, humanitarian crisis, then why won't the Muslim slash Islamic people won't take their own people? No, it's a great question. I mean, we had to beg and plead for Egypt to open up the southern border gate, which I forget its name, but the, the gate between Israel and, and Gaza, and they opened it up briefly and accepted a few exclu excluded people, and then that was it. I, I, I just, Egypt doesn't want them. Jordan doesn't want them. 
Lebanon doesn't want them. Syria doesn't want them. Saudi Arabia doesn't want them. So why should we be responsible for taking them, for goodness sake? Makes no sense. Exactly my point. Now, shall we go to the southern border? Let's do it. Why should we accept them? Their countries don't want them. We'll just leave it at that. The Speaker of the House, shall well, we go well, there? Oh, well, I don't, I don't know if Mexico or Venezuela or Costa Rica or China or the Middle East or wherever the people that are coming across the southern border want them or not. I know that America is a honeypot, and if we leave our back door open, our back door is going to be flooded with people that want a handout. Oh, or, or nefarious. Or want to do harm to us, yes. Correct. Exactly. All right, so let's uh, talk about Speaker of the House. All right. It, 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 it really doesn't matter who it is. Why can't we get one voted in? Uh, let's talk about purple states. The only purple state Republican out there is someone who was voted into office because a conservative came out to vote for him. So who really cares what the Democrats in their region think? That, that just boggles my mind why they can't get around that, that fact themselves. Well, there are bright red gerrymandered congressional districts. There are bright blue gerrymandered congressional districts. And there are some that are a different hue of, let's say, a shade of purple. That said, I'm, I'm sick to death of conceding that point to moderates so that we get someone more moderate in these positions of power. That's what we did with McCarthy, and look where it got us. Exactly my point. The only reason these Republicans in these purple districts were elected was because the conservatives came out to vote well, for them. Well, the person, the person that de- uh, what, I, there I, wasn't I, one, I, there wasn't one Democrat, there wasn't one Democrat that came out to vote for. Them. Well, but you understand, Doc. The, the the one thing that I would say to that, and I'm not arguing with you, is that uh, I understand that there are people that have clearly defined themselves as Democrats. They would be more classically termed as liberals. And then there are people that have defined themselves as Republicans that you could also call conservative. There's some overlap there. But there's a lot of this country that don't know what the hell they are, right? And they have to be convinced. I would agree with that 100%. They they have to be convinced. They have to be convinced (laughs) one way or the other, right? So, So it's these people, like the people that voted for Kevin McCarthy, they think they're conservative. Okay, yes. Are they? No, they're not. Right. So, but they're Republicans. So every Republican is not a conservative and every Repub- every conservative is not a Republican because I would argue, Doc, and I got to run. I would argue that I am more in a lot of ways conservative than any one of you when it comes to physical discipline. Certainly. That's why I don't class myself, classify myself as a conservative because conservatives aren't conservative when it comes to physical policy anymore. They're like liberals. Today's Republicans are yesterday's Democrats. Today's Democrats are yesterday's socialists. Libertarians unite. 1252 on Super Talk. Efficient Heating and Cooling wants to talk with you. Jeff Eddy wants to see you. If you have trouble with your heater, if you've now cranked that thing up and you find that it's not running as it should, and you're probably scratching your head, and I've had this I've had this situation on my own over the past, I don't know, eight or ten years, where you crank up your heater and your heater was working fine the last time you ran it in February or March, and now it's not running fine anymore. What happened? It's not doing anything. Well, it happens. Jeff Eddy's seen it time and again. Allow Jeff Eddy and their crew to come out and do the right thing. Fix that unit. Fix what ails it. Or if it's time, they're a diamond contractor with Mitsubishi Electric. They're an elite pro partner with Ream. Depending on which direction that you want to go, they can do that. They offer free financing. Ask them about that as well. Also, Jeff Eddy's Efficient Heating and Cooling of Tennessee is the best value going when it comes to maintenance. Never will you be charged over $125 for a maintenance call on a residence, no matter how many units you have. And oftentimes, 
that call is much less than $125. So call Jeff Eddy and Efficient Heating and Cooling today and allow them to fix what ails your heater. If your heater's not ready, call Jeff Eddy. Efficient Heating and Cooling. Go to efficienthvac.net. Efficienthvac.net or call 615-784-4424. Again, 615-784-4424. For Efficient!
From ABC News, I'm Michelle Franzen. The House in recess again after another round of voting for a new speaker failed. As his backers had feared, the list of Republicans voting against Jim Jordan has grown. Yesterday, he lost 20 GOP votes. Today, he lost 22. Republicans are now expected to dive into a closed-door huddle to figure out next steps. One option is to give more authority to the temporary caretaker of the House, that Speaker pro tempore Patrick McHenry. Several leading Republicans, though, have said they reject that. But if it were put to a vote in this narrowly divided chamber, it might just pass. ABC's Stephen Portnoy. The death toll rising in the Israel-Hamas war. More than 4,000 killed since October 7th. President Biden in Israel today in a show of solidarity following the Hamas terrorist attack. President Biden said the U.S. will make sure Israel has what it needs to protect its people and defend its nation. He acknowledged the anger people there have after the Hamas attacks, but warned... Justice must be done. But I caution this while you feel that rage... Don't be consumed by it. President Biden urging Israel to be, quote, deliberate in its response. Karen Travers, ABC News, the White House. The president also pledging $100 million in emergency aid for Gaza and says U.S. intelligence shows the bombing at a hospital yesterday appears to be an errant rocket fired by Palestinian militants. That blast sparking widespread protests. You're in Vandersloot in court today, entering a guilty plea to extortion charges related to the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. Her family says he also confessed to her killing. Vandersloot was never charged with Holloway's 2005 disappearance and murder. Instead, his extortion conviction is for the $250,000 he demanded for information about her remains. He now faces up to 20 years in prison, but says he has given his life to Christ. Derek Dennis, ABC News. Holloway's mom says she feels the case is solved after Vandersloot admitted he killed Holloway and put her body in the water. You're listening to ABC News.
It is the Matt Murphy Radio Show. Hour number two starts right now, 105 and a good afternoon. Thank you for being here. We're here till 3 o'clock today. Live and local, information-fueled and opinion-driven. Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It's my episode 437 and a good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. Money for Ukraine, Israel, and Gaza all intermingled. That's what the Biden administration, uh, uh, we are told, wants uh, from the Congress of the United States of America, as soon as Congress gets back up and running, which doesn't look like it's going to happen anytime soon. A report is the Biden administration, or the report from Bloomberg, is that the Biden administration plans to ask a Congress for X amount of dollars. I'll let you guess. Have you seen this story, Bell? Guess how much the Biden administration wants for Ukraine and Israel. You want to you take, take a wag? Now, now, understand, Ukraine's already gotten like $130 billion. Which sounds uh, like a lot of money, but combined, I would say uh, 120, 100, uh, 100 billion, 100 billion. So it's a, coming get off on the, there and earn it coming Let's off go. on the cheap. Uh, the Biden administration, Joe Biden, considering a supplemental request of approximately 100 billion dollars of money that we do not have. That would include defense assistance, assistance for Israel. We've already paid for that. We already give Israel three point three billion dollars a year. They don't need another whatever amount of money. To my knowledge, I mean, has Benjamin Netanyahu asked us for money? I know that the Ukrainian guy's asking us for money every other day. But I don't, to my knowledge... I, I haven't seen him do it publicly. I mean, that could have been discussed behind the scenes. But maybe so. Usually, if you're really trying to strong-arm somebody, you make it a big issue in public. So why would we tie together defense assistance for Israel and Ukraine alongside, get this, border security funding and aid to nations in the Indo-Pacific, including Taiwan. The Biden administration apparently has pledged for support. Well, they have pledged publicly support for Israel in the wake of the deadly attacks um, uh, a week ago Saturday. Speculation that um, since Hamas attacked Israel, the administration would tie to or attempt to tie together funding for Ukraine and Israel. That's what they're doing right now. According to Bloomberg, they want a supplemental request of about $100 billion that would include defense assistance for Israel and Ukraine. So they're trying to tie that money together. Uh, no. Uh, the simple answer to that is no. If you want the House of Representatives, which continues to control the purse strings, if you wish for them to give you additional monies to foreign governments, then that needs to be considered individually, not collectively. And but I would expect that Jim Jordan would not do that you have if he to becomes remember, speaker. Though, anytime there's a tragedy, anytime there's a war, anytime there's a con, all we have to do is throw money at it and it fixes it. Yeah, let's not let a crisis go to waste when it comes to printing money or borrowing money against ourselves, making up money. This is made up fake money. When I say this is fake money, I mean this is fake money. Now, I want to repair a couple of things from earlier in the show, if I, can, uh, if I can find some of these. When you said the other day you can't be pro-Palestinian without being pro-Hamas because the Palestinians voted Hamas into power, does that mean that I can't be pro-American without being pro-Biden? Now, I did say something similar to that, and I wouldn't dare guess the exact verbiage, but what I said was and what I intended the message I intended to deliver is that I find a lot of people who say that they are pro-Palestinian, but I don't find a lot of people who say that they are pro-Palestinian who would then condemn Hamas and their actions. It's difficult to find those pro-Palestinian protesters, especially in the United States of America, that are also steadfastly against Hamas and want to see a destruction of Hamas. When it comes to that region of the world, my question was this. If all of these people in Palestine, as we're being told, are innocents, if none of them agree, the suggestion is that these folks don't agree with the tactics of Hamas. That they just want to live in peace next to their Jewish brothers and sisters in Gaza and in the West Bank. Now, understand something. I don't believe that's true for the most part. While I'm not here to turn individuals into collectives, Right? I don't speak for every Palestinian person when I tell you that the most 
Most of the Palestinians are pro-Hamas. They just are. And if they're not, why are they not looking as the Israel, at the Israeli defense forces as liberators? Giving them an opportunity to actually live free in Palestine, which is what supporters of Palestine tell us that they want, a free Palestine. Well, if so follow the logic or the illogic here, right? We are told that most of the individuals who are in Palestine or who support Palestine do not support Hamas because who would support killing grandma and babies? Okay, if that's the case, then why is Hamas in power in the Gaza Strip? Well, because they held elections and now they hold control. And while the, we are told that most of the Palestinian people don't like Hamas, they don't like their tactics, they think they're bad, they're bad people. They don't represent them. Well, if that's true, why did they not rise up and remove them from power before now? Well, they don't have the abilities, Matt. Well, if that's the case, then why are they not looking at this as an opportunity to get new leadership in the Gaza Strip? Why are they not telling the Israeli Defense Forces where the hostages are? Do they not know? Some of them know. You tell me they don't know? I don't believe you. I think they know. I think somebody knows. Hamas knows. Well, but they're ultimately under a stranglehold of terrorism, and there's nothing that they can do about it. Well, then let's free Palestine. And the way to do that is to kill Hamas. All of them. So if what you heard is that you can't be pro-Palestine without being pro-Hamas, well, I think that's largely true because they don't have free, open, and fair elections. They're not comparable to the United States of America. But I would argue that most Palestinians are pro-Hamas, not every one of them. But I would suggest they're in the distinct minority. But what we're being told by every major media outlet in America and beyond is that, well, the Palestinian people, they don't actually agree with these tactics based on what we've heard and what... Well, I'd like to talk to one of those people. I would like to talk to someone who is staunchly pro-Palestinian and not pro-Hamas. That's all. I want to talk to somebody who says free Palestine on the regular because I want to know what that means. I can't figure it out for the life of me. Of the... Group Hamas and the Israelis, can you tell me which is in favor of a two-state solution? Did you know that in 2006, 2005 to 2006, 2006, Hamas won the election in Gaza because the Palestinian Authority was not strong enough on the issue of the destruction of Israel, the Palestinian Authority actually agrees with a two-state solution, which is why they lost the Gaza Strip in elections to Hamas. It is a part of the mission statement. When Hamas was created out of the Muslim Brotherhood in the 1990s and grew as a power in that region of the world, one of their central mission statements is to destroy Israel and the Jews. But you tell me that you can be pro-Palestinian and anti-Hamas. Okay. John is next in the borough, wants to talk about Israel. Hey, John, thank you for calling in. How are you? Hey, man. How you doing, buddy? I'm well. Thank you. Okay. So I want to get your, your thoughts on something. So I was talking with a pastor um, not too long ago, okay? Are you familiar with the term, the blossom of the fig tree? The blossom of the fig tree. I admit that it is not familiar. Okay. So in in the Bible, in Matthew 24, it talks about the blossom of the fig tree, which is Israel, when it got its independence and became a country, okay? So according to the Bible, Christ says that the generation shall not pass until they see the rapture. 
So basically a generation is 70 to 80 years. So Israel is in the 73rd year of their existence, okay? So there's seven years of the tribulations. So according to what the Bible says, and this pastor was telling me, that we're in the beginning stages of the seven-year tribulations and that the final war will be fought in the Middle East. So with all of this going on now, what is your input on it? I don't have any input on that, John. I, I've learned over the years that I've done this job, there was a time where maybe I would give it a go there, but I do not have the theological background to offer really anything beyond what you just said. Um, I know that in my understanding of the Bible and in my teachings, uh, that the man shall, man shall know neither the time nor place. So, you know, I've kind of always subscribed to that when it comes to biblical revelation. Right. Does that make okay. sense? Does that well, make sense? I mean, I, I, I'm not trying, I'm not, I'm not trying to dismiss the conversation, but I am no, saying no, no, that I, I I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm not worthy of the conversation. Right. I understand. I understand. And it's just, and that's the reason why I was asking, maybe some of the listeners may have some input that, you know, that, that knows more about it. Um, so it was just, it was a thought that with everything going on and, you know, with what the scriptures and stuff like that say, if anyone had any input on it. Well, I will say this, and this is based on just empirical, you know, life evidence in the years that I have been blessed to have the opportunity to speak on platforms like this. Um, we've not really had a dust up along these lines in a long, long time, uh, but we have had dust ups. And I, right. I recall that when there's a dust up between Israel and other forces in the Arab world, um, th this is something that comes up. It's not something that doesn't. Certainly, I mean, it, it is, it is a reminder, uh, for faith-based individuals that, um, that the Bible spells out the prophecy as to how this will go down. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mel, well, well I'll, I'll, uh, I'll keep the phone lines open and perhaps we'll listen to others. Um, you know, I understand that it is the nature of, of the conflict that we talk about the end of times. I'm not dismissive of anything. But I'm certainly not qualified to tell you when the end of days will be here. Or if this is any sort of signal that it's coming. I am not a biblical scholar and I don't pretend to be. Perhaps I should strive for more of that in my life. Sharon is next up out of Smyrna. Sharon, thank you for your call. How are you? I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you. Okay, so um, just a little observation. I'm starting to believe that the public face of the United States government is the circus meant to distract us. I don't know. It's got more drama than a soap opera. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty fun to watch if you if you don't take personal stake in it. It's uh, it For me, though, Sharon, it's becoming more of a comedy show than anything. <laughs> 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 I mean, it, it, is this not ridiculous that it is. they can't set their little – uh, aspersions aside come on yeah it's juvenile i'm sorry <laughs> temper tantrums from children you know, i have not gotten like. because the vote the final vote came in right as we came on air so i've not been able to do the dive to find out which individuals voted for jim jordan yesterday that didn't vote for him today and Pray tell what exactly happened that you supported him for speaker yesterday, but you don't support him today. It makes no sense. <laughs> and it's never going to. Nope. Uh, no. Unless, right. uh, well, it, does, it, it, it makes sense in this way, though, Sharon, and, and you and I can laugh about it because that's all we can do. But here's, yeah. here, here's what I would suggest has happened. Uh, someone voted for Jim Jordan yesterday, and then they realized, well, wait a minute. If Jim's going to have a little trouble getting this nomination, then I need to pull my vote back so I can get a little side hustle going and get a chairmanship of some committee or get a commitment that he'll come raise money for me or he'll get me some money on the side for my reelection from the RNC or whatever it might be. Somebody's got a side hustle going now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sad. Yeah. Sad but true. Yeah. <laughs> Sharon, thank you for the call.
See you later. All right, take care. Rosa and David and Jordan, I mean, you mentioned the end of times, and we're going to talk about it. And several of our callers will talk about it next on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. We do live in dangerous times, not just across the world, but right here in the United States of America. And my friends at Defense Systems understand that. As a matter of fact, uh, they have a special message for those of you in the teaching profession. If you live especially right here in Davidson County, in the Metro Nashville school system, uh, because my friend Brink Fiddler and his team, you heard Tracy and Gloria talk about it yesterday. They, they have open enrollment for a rapid response training event for teachers. If you feel unprepared to face the unthinkable in your school, a training seminar is for you. Attendees will learn how to, or will learn lessons, I should say, uh, learn from tragedies that can shape our future, specific action plans to take during an active violent event, and a comprehensive medical skill set empowering you with the ability to save yourself or save someone's life. It's $100 per person. Lunch is provided. It will be Friday, November 10th from 930 in the morning to 230 in the afternoon. It's at Assurian Corporate Headquarters on Church Street in Nashville. Go to DefenseSystems.com for more information. That's DefenseSystems.com to register. I invite you to do so. It's DefenseSystems.com. And remember, hope is not a plan. It is time to get trained. Get trained with Defense Systems. You know, every time I hear that commercial, Jack Johnson's got his barbecue this weekend. Senator Jack, good friend of the show, Senator Jack Johnson. I think, uh, you know, before you know it, I'm going to hear Jack talking about special guest Matt Murphy on one of those commercials. But you know, sometimes silence speaks volumes. I think maybe Jack will invite me to this event. Maybe the phone will ring. Maybe the text will come. I think he wants to keep the class level up. I don't blame him. I don't blame him at all. Hey, plus maybe he doesn't class. know that you and Andy made good with each other and he's afraid a fight would break out. Man, that'd be great, wouldn't it? If Andy and I arm wrestled for no reason. For no, yeah, for no oh, reason. Oh, my plus one could be Chris Hand and we could watch them fight. Yes. Now that they're on the outs. Absolutely. So, uh, speaking of class, 
Guess where I'm going tomorrow night? Five guesses and all of them count. I don't. You, we could spend the next three days. You wouldn't guess. I'll give you some hints after you guess the first time. Matt Moore's back there. He can guess too. Where's Matt Murphy going? Where in the world is Murphy going tomorrow night? I'll give you one hint. It was not scheduled by me. So you know that it's going to be classier than whatever you're thinking right now. Did Erica schedule it? She did. I don't know. I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm at a complete loss. I will be in attendance tomorrow evening at the symphony. Uh, what's the program? I have no idea. I don't know. You know, sometimes they do the uh, all the music from the Star Wars movies. That would, I hope, that God, been cool. oh man, I hope that's what it is. <laughs> I'm a little nervous. Uh, because I could easily be asleep during the middle of this, but you know what? Some things are not for me. We're going to go see the Nutcracker. Don't call her that when she's in front of you. Wait. 7672 guest. Oh, you did. 7672 got it. Congratulations. You win a bottle of water and ink pen used by me. 7672. Pick it up at the radio station. Post haste. Congratulations. I want to say I'm going to the ballet. I'm not going to the ballet. I'm going to the symphony. I, who knew? But you you honestly don't know the program? <sighs> You're getting me in trouble because I think I've been told. And I don't Maybe remember. Curious. I don't remember what it is. I'll I could, it up. I guess I could find out. It's the symphony. I enjoy the symphony. Folks playing on cellos and violas. Give me a hot lick on the piccolo and I'm a happy man. Jordan is next in Nashville to talk the speaker's race. Hey, Jordan, how are you? I'm good, Matt. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Well, long time listener since you got here. Uh, I'm a big fan. I just... I just want to say that I don't know what the GOP is thinking right now. I mean, if if we were to get in, if the, the the Republicans were to get into power in 2024, this isn't this isn't a great premonition of how they do in leadership. Because I, I mean, I feel like we're at a pivotal point where we need to get something figured out, and they're just dragging their feet like it's no big deal. I mean, with this hundred billion dollars coming through. You know, somebody's got to be around to, to push back against that because, like you said, we don't have it. And we need the only body that we have as Republicans right now to be functional. And I don't, I don't understand why they think that they can just do this and it's, it's not going to cause any ramifications. I mean, uh, does anybody have any ideas about, you know, trying to just push this forward to get somewhere? So that we have somebody? I mean, why are we going backwards? They're saying that Jim Jordan is losing votes as we speak. Well, what happened was, and I got some clarity on that, um, Republicans, there were four Republicans that switched their vote against Jordan, and there were two that flipped to Jordan, so that was a net two loss from 20 to 22. I would expect, right, I, I, would expect I mean, Jordan, I would expect that all of this gets worked out over the next couple of days. I don't know. I would, but you know what? I would expect common sense would dictate that if they don't have a speaker by tomorrow, that they stay in Washington, D.C. all weekend until they get one, you know? But I don't expect that'll happen either. I just, I'm just frustrated because, you know, we, to be able to win the election in 2024, we're, we're going to kind of have to, to give and take with each other and, and, and band together or somehow they're going to pull it out. Somehow, Somebody's going to pull it out on the Democratic side if we don't stand in unison. I mean, I just don't I don't see why there's so much holdouts, like hardcore holdouts on Jim Jordan when we really just need to stand together as a party. I mean, that's just my two cents on it. But I just I hope that this that this goes somewhere because we really we, we got to we got to get the ball rolling and stop some of this. I don't understand why there's not more uproar about this $100 billion. Because that's just crazy. Well, we because I, I don't know that the $100 billion is going anywhere anyway. Um, and certainly it shouldn't without some level of accountability or without separation, right? And Jordan, thank you for the call. You're right. It would seem that these times would dictate that serious-minded conservatives and Republicans, but I don't repeat myself, those are two different things, 
that they would get together and they would come to some form of consensus about who they want their next speaker to be. Scalise was in the mix. Scalise did not have enough support. And so Jim Jordan was nominated. There's not another nominee. There's not another person, serious person, that has put themselves into consideration. Now, here are the Republicans that switched. Vern Buchanan of Florida voted for Representative Byron Donalds after voting for Jordan yesterday. Drew Ferguson of Georgia voted for Majority Leader Steve Scalise after voting for Jordan yesterday. Marionette, I'm not making that up, Representative Marionette Miller Meeks. Is that, a, is that an actual human being with the name Mary, Marionette Miller Meeks? Can you? That is a mouthful. Parents did not like her. M-A-R-I-A-N-E-T-T-E. -E. So that is, that is the daughter of a man named Marion that really, really wanted a son. Yes. Don't you feel that way? Yes, without a doubt. Without a question. Marionette Miller Beeks voted for Representative Kay Granger of Texas because, you know, why, why? not? And Pete Stauber of Minnesota voted for Representative Bruce Westerman of Arkansas. Republicans who flipped back to Jordan on the second ballot. Uh, Doug LaMalfa of California supported McCarthy on the first ballot, went to Jordan. Victoria Sparts uh, voted for Massey on the first ballot and flipped to Jordan on ballot number two. What I don't understand, and maybe Mac Morey, who I know is gathering headlines for the 2 o'clock in the newsroom, when's the next vote? Are, why do they not they have another scheduled vote? It. Why not have another vote? Because they got to they got to uh, coagulate and figure out what they're going to do to try to get some of these votes. Yeah, they're having a closed door meeting right now. Mm. Good thing that door's closed. <laughs> can, can I shame you real quick? Yeah, is that well? Yes, I, I've been shamed by a super texter already because apparently I put an extra syllable in physical. I know that it's physical. It, or phys physical, physical. It's not physical. I know that it's not physical. I know that it's physical with a with a it's with an F. Fiscal. I know it's something else that begins with an F too. It's not just the <laughs> symphony. It's somebody with the symphony. Okay. I see. And Garth calls her boss. Is this Trisha Yearwood? Yes. That's who you're going to see. Man, I hope she brings some Publix fried chicken. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's that gets left at the house. How do you forget Trisha, man? I, you know, I I found out about this because I wondered what this charge was on the um, on the Amex, you know. And then I was told that it was going to be a surprise, but surprise, you already know. Yeah, she's doing a uh, three night stand at uh, Skirmerhorn with the uh, Symphony. It's Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All right, so we've uh, we got the first night taken care of. If I see you down there, just come up and say hello to me. I'll be the guy in the hat. One thirty three, Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN. Down at Savory Spice this past Friday, man, the smells were so good. Everyone that came in the store commented on the incredible smells that you get from Savory Spice. Holly and David at Savory Spice have been doing it for a while now. They have the best spices in Nashville, in Middle Tennessee, right there. Two locations, actually, to serve. One is uh, right in LNL Market and the other in Franklin, just off the square. I was looking at the taco soup that we are going to be having in the Murphy household soon, and it is like self-contained, right? You bring the ground beef, they bring everything else for the taco soup. I was looking on the package uh, that he had gotten, and I turned it over and said, ground beef, and then you just brown the ground beef and put all of this into the big thing, and it shows you how to do it, and all the spices are already there. I mean, it is one-stop shopping for someone who wants to be a better cook in the kitchen but doesn't know how. 
You've got the availability, and if you are an expert chef, you already know the only place to get your spices is Savory Spice, located just off the square in Franklin. Also, a location, LNL Market on Charlotte Pike. Go see the locally owned place that I go for all spices. Folks, if you want to up your food game, you start by up in the spice game. And if you want to up the spice game, you do so with Savory Spice. Super Talk 99.7 WTN, not that I've asked him, but Cameron Smith has come in early. I'm still weighing my options here. 138 Super Talk 99.7 WTN. I am morally, ethically obligated to have him on at 205 because I actually invite him in. Uh, but when he gets here early, I, I'm always flummoxed because I don't want people to freak out because we've got this establishment rhino in the house. I guess I change. I change, don't I, when Cameron gets here? It's the way I feel anyway. You're you're, you're hurtful. <laughs> how's it, how's, I, how's I, it go? I'm quite sensitive. That's I'm, some nice Georgia red you got on. Do we have him on camera right now? I certainly no, I can fix that. Hold get on. him turn on camera so you can see the Georgia red top that he's got. Right now. Don't you turn that off. No, you I get am. some How light on that. It? Okay. Get some yeah. light on that. Don't you kill that. It thing. is Georgia red. I'll, I'll be. It's not my usual crimson. Yeah. I just, and it's hate week for you, too. It is. <laughs> it's a great week. I'm going to play, in your honor at 2 o'clock, I'm going to play my favorite hate week clip, and you know exactly the one I'm talking about. It's an Alabama student talking about Tennessee. I hate Tennessee. It's like I just dislike Auburn. I hate Tennessee. That thing's like 15, 20 years old and now. It never, and it never never gets funny. old. It's never not. And, and even if you're a Tennessee fan, you'll love it, especially it if you're hilarious. a Tennessee fan. It is. I mean, Mac Maury? No, it's hilarious. You agree. It's very, very funny. Uh, and it's Tennessee Hate Week. Hey, Matt, what's the end score going to be? Ooh. I'll give you a second. How much are the Vols going to win by? Mm. Can we uh, can we talk about this in the 2 o'clock hour at some point? Let's do it. Can we get some analysis oh, between so Alabama fan and mm. Tennessee fan? Yes, please. That's um, that's like the Israelis. I mean, it the joke would work, but it's a little too serious. Little, I mean, yeah, we can't really do that right we're now. We're not because, to joke about it. No, because the people, are, people are dying right now. Uh, we'll get more into that in a moment. I want to talk the, uh, about the end of times with David, though. 
uh, because we had a caller that brought up, you know, biblical prophecy and how this is sure. potentially fulfilling some of that. Hey, David, how are you? Dave, uh, after that incredible buildup, David's not there. David, I can hear you. I can hear you breathing. <laughs> if you are, if you are somehow muffled, or if you're under duress or tied up, knock three times, David. Dang it, Matt! It was the rapture. It happened, and you and I got left. Oh boy! Dang it! Left behind. I know I should have read those books. Yeah, I met Kurt Cameron. I didn't read the books. Yeah, Tim LaHaye, Jerry Jenkins. That's what I get. Those things are popular, man. Um, all right, six one five seven three seven ninety nine eighty six. Um, I got a couple of things I want to get to. I won't get to them because you're here. One, Walmart has a stealing problem. Actually, let's do this real quick. Sure. Walmart has a stealing problem. Sam's Club, Costco. I mean, these places have a stealing problem. Yes. And the stealing problem, I mean, obviously shoplifting has always been a problem. Yep. But now the shoplifting has been exacerbated by self-checkout. Yeah. So I learned this was happening. This was an experiment. Hand on a stack of Bibles that I did, I don't know, eight years ago, nine years ago, ten years ago. So I went to my local Sam's Club. At the time, it was in Hoover, Alabama, a suburb of Birmingham. And I did the self-checkout. I, I actually, it was right after I had gotten the uh, my the scanner on my phone. So mm-hmm. you can, like, scan yes. your own stuff, which is, vi- I don't know why. I mean, I've got it. I don't know why anybody would go through the line anymore. So I beep, 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 beep. I beeped all my stuff. Right. And... You know, gave my little digital receipt to the lady, and she beep, beep, beep. She scanned a couple of things, and I walked out. Yeah. I got home. Well, no. I, I, no, I got home, and I realized I had a book that I'd bought, a cookbook that I'd bought for Erica that I did not scan. It was underneath the chicken, that the happens. delicious yep. rotisserie chicken. Mm-hmm. And I got to thinking, it took me down this road of, okay, what is the purpose of them scanning my receipt? What is the purpose of them checking my receipt? And then, you know, they check your receipt and then they pop a couple of items in your cart. Yeah. Well, they scan the receipt and they, that little wand immediately knows what's on your receipt. Right. Which I put there. Right. So I guess maybe if they beep something that's not on the receipt, Yes. That would flag it. Yes. And then they will they will pull it. And they'll right? say, hey, whoa, this isn't on the receipt. You need to go over to customer service. Yeah, and, and they'll keep checking. Things. Yeah. So what the thieves have learned to do, and I ran the experiment next time around. Because the next time I went to Sam's Club, I did this with a, a pay, I, a, it was tube socks. It was six, a set of six tube socks. I did not, intentionally did not pay for my tube socks. And I let her check me out. Right. And she scanned me and said, have a nice day. And then I walked and I immediately turned to customer service and I went to customer service and I said, I don't, I don't, I don't think I paid for these tube socks. And then I paid for them. Right. Because I don't want to be a thief. (laughs) That's good. But I did want to confirm in my mind that this is what people are doing now. They're intentionally not scanning items. And it is the, I did some deep diving on it. It is the policy of Walmart that it is less expensive if it's under twenty dollars to let it slide than it is to deal with it. Yes. The the time consumption, right. yeah. The you know customer frustration, money, yeah. whatever. And I think, I think thieves have picked up on this. In fact, I know they have because now Walmart is trying to do more to secure their self checkout areas. And they have cameras on them, and I don't know if they're doing this at Sam's oh, Club yeah. or not. No, when we check out at Walmart with my family, because I have kids throwing stuff down and pulling stuff out, we get flagged every single time now. Because the cameras, if they see, like, movement in front of the scanner that doesn't beep, then they flag it. They flag it. They've got AI systems and things now that, that do that. And so I don't even like using the self-checkout anymore. So story out of the New York Post. Walmart's push to crack down on shoplifting at self-checkout counters with anti-theft technology has led to a surge of hostile encounters between hourly workers and shoppers. The big box chain, one of the many retailers battling increasing theft that's eaten into the bottom lines, 
has armed employees with handheld devices that track purchases at self-out register uh, self-checkout registers. What they tell the because they understand, but it's making the situation worse. They understand that they don't want an encounter like, hey, I think you're stealing something. So what they do is when they flag something like what you're talking about, they walk over to the customer and say, hey, I think the machine is malfunctioning here. Why don't you go over here to this customer service rep and they'll finish checking you out? They don't like accuse anybody of yeah, anything. Yeah, that's smart. But that doesn't work because the person doesn't want to go over there. No, I want to stay here because they know they're stealing something. And so it lead it escalates and it's leading to more hostile encounters. And the workers are going, whoa. We're we're, not get, we don't get paid enough to do this. We don't get paid enough to get beat up, you know, over, you know, tube socks. And this is why companies left San Francisco in mass. Right. I mean, so the question is, what do you do about it? Do you go back to regular customer service and eliminate self-checkout? Have you heard of Amazon? <laughs> well, we can't we can't do Amazon anymore. Chris Han says we can't do Amazon because they got like no, it's because the uniparty Matt non non traditional transgender I, I, models. Are... I think you're pronouncing that wrong, Chris Hand? No, the, it's not. Uh, it's not theft. It's multicultural reparations. Well, there you go. Well, I, I yeah, I see it, and I, I can see why it's a problem, especially at Sam's for a family. Or like mine, where when we check out, it is a busload of stuff. Mm -hmm. They only grab the items on the top, understandably. They don't want to unpack your entire cart, so they pick off the top. So right. I could literally stack $40 worth of stuff underneath on, on, on top, and then everything underneath, I could just steal. Right. I know that. I don't do that, but like I get right. why it's a I problem. Mean, I guess maybe I'm just naive. The realization that... As long as you don't try to steal too much too quickly, right? If you if your I the number because that the, that little person that looks at the receipt, whether it's digital or whatever, it told it it tells them the number of items, right? But if you got a lot of stuff and it tells them twenty nine items, you don't. You, if you've got thirty five items and they're all underneath, they're not going to dig underneath there to scan those things underneath there. Now I'm not trying to tell people how to steal, right? But this is a growing problem. I can see how people get away with it easy, and you have you don't have to be that smart to figure it out. I mean, but the big deal for me is I got personal integrity that says no. And if exactly. you don't have that, if you don't have somebody, well, you know, they don't care. If they lose just a little, it's probably okay. When you start down that slippery slope, like you're just a thief. Right. <laughs> like it doesn't – if you steal a pack of bacon – a thing of tube socks, some candy. Like, this is lessons I learned as a child. A like, Trisha Yearwood cookbook, which is what I think it was. Right. You, you can't do that. You got to go back and pay for it. You got to do it. I didn't go back and pay for the Trisha Yearwood pay yearbook. I mean, or whatever it was. The cookbook. Terrible. And, and you have the audacity to go see her live after you stole from her. I'll you take took the, money out of her pocket. I'll take the cookbook. How do to you? Her. I'll how, take the cookbook back to How her. do you live with yourself? I don't know. I don't know. I chalked it up to, well, this is their fault. Yeah, but, because I've not been trained. I mean, this was the way I justified it in my mind because I, it bothered me. I'm like, oh, crap. I I accidentally stole something. And I thought about going back and I'm like, to hell with that. I'm not doing that. And so in my brain, the way that I justified it is, you know what? It's not my fault because they didn't train me how to properly operate this machine that checks this stuff out. And I didn't mean to do it. And if they would spend some more money on some checkout people, then this wouldn't be happening. When this happens in my family, we literally have a pile of, well, this didn't check out right. And I, I'm not going to make a special trip to go back, but I'll stack it up and be like, well, I think we got enough to go back to Costco. I mean, because for us, it's like, that's not our stuff. Cameron doesn't so take, take everything back. back till he's got a stack of $2,000 worth. <laughs> right. And then it's like, wow, this is a felony. We should probably get this. <laughs> hey, I but, but usually, accidentally like, stole these I, tires. <laughs> I get, but I get that. It's one item you're like, uh, why I'm, I'm paying money that. out of my pocket I'm to take this that. back because your system's stupid. And I get why people justify that. And we just say, well, when, next time we go back, we got to take it back. Either take it back or pay for it. Well, and that's a good lesson to teach your kids. Yeah. I mean, it, it's in, in all sincerity. It's also really awkward, too, when you go to customer service and say, I don't think I paid for this. And they're like, would you like a refund? And I'm no, I I didn't pay for it. I walked. Out. That's that's what happened. No, that's what they did to me in my tube. <laughs> they acted like I was causing them a hassle. Like, why are you? Why didn't you just leave? 
<laughs> yeah. Right. The, they didn't say that, but the attitude was, "We'll just, just, just right. take it, man. It's it, no big, bro- it's no big, no deal. big deal. It's like, just tube socks, buddy. I gotta. You mean I gotta do work to fix your my, what? <laughs> yeah. I got. I got more important things to do. Right. I'm just telling you, these truck tires are not paid for right now. I, it was an accident. Have you seen TikTok, man? That's interesting. Well, the uh, Walmart has implemented these anti theft. Tech, this anti-theft technology to stop the sticky fingers. And um, <laughs> so now there's a rise in violent confrontations. And Walmart's like, can we get a little help from the police? Mm-mm. And in these areas where the violent confrontations <laughs> happen, the police are like, nope. okay, we got more. Th- we got too much stuff to do. Super awkward. No, <laughs> no way. No. Well, uh, my really fa- my favorite is person. now with Amazon, when they send you something and you're like, I need to return this. And they're like, keep yeah, it. Yeah, keep it. And I'm, I don't want it. I don't. I don't want a pile of things I don't want. It's what do I do with? You just well, and I it. went to Costco yesterday because the wife was for some reason she was shopping in the tiny kingdom of Brentwood, mm. and and so I had to return something to Costco that was too big. I was very proud. Mm. Uh, my wife bought a double X, and I didn't need a double X. I needed an XL. It was a Predator shirt. Well, I go to take it back to Costco in West Nashville, and you can go to any Costco you want, and. I say I need to. Ex- I just need to exchange this. Can I go get it? And and they're like, no, we don't do exchanges. We just do returns. Yes, right. So you can return this, and it's returned, and then you can shop. But we don't. They don't even. They don't take exchanges. And I get why, because it just leads to confusion and people walking around with crap that's not theirs and walking out with crap. No, this we're not a, doing this. All happened that. to me. It was hilarious this summer at Costco. So I, we use a beach chair. This thing's beat to all get out. But then I realized, well, that I ordered that offline and I go the Costco offline mm-hmm. and then I go to the store and I say, I see that there's a lower price in the store. I, I'll keep the chair because we used it and right. it's like all scraped up and everything. But I bought it within the window for a price adjustment. I just want a lower price. Yeah. And they said, no. And I said, I'm offering to keep the chair because I've used it and you just give me some money. And they said, no, but you can return it here. And give us the chair back. And then go get a new one. And we'll give you your money, and you can go get a new chair. For less money. For less money. And I'm <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm willing to take the one I've used. Mm-mm, you can't do that. And then, you know, some of me is like, why do we have all these ethics? I mean, <laughs> morals. I was Stupid try- morals. I was trying to be fair. I know. And they were like, No. No, you may not. I know that it, you mentioned that about Amazon. The first time that Amazon told me that, I mean, but even it was it was obviously not. They didn't tell me. It was all via email right. or whatever. But it's like, hey, I need to return this. Nah, you keep it. We'll send you a new one. What? <laughs> what? Do you, I don't want that. I don't want to. Okay, do I have to pay for it? No, no, no. You get two for price of one. Whatever. It, it's not worth our time. Mm. Well, then you're telling me that the item that you just sold me for twenty four dollars and ninety five cents is worth nothing to you. Not worth our time. 153, speaking of time, got to go. Clark, Dan, and Ernest on these matters and other things like the end of times. That's on the way on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. It is October, uh, uh, last I checked at least, it's October. And October is, last I checked, National Healthy Lung Month. I would not have known that had the friends over at Craft Body Scan not alerted me to this fact. Uh, we want to make sure that those lungs are nice and healthy. You know, it was some 18 years ago that I put down my last cigarette and decided to stop smoking, to become a non-smoker. I can tell you how, if you ever wonder how to do that, by the way. Uh, 18 years. I smoked for 17 years and I've been quit for 18 years, but I was not sure how the long-term effects had been on my lungs until I visited Craft Body Scan earlier this year and they gave me a heart and lung scan. As a matter of fact, I did the full body scan to make sure that everything going on inside of your body is A-OK before you become symptomatic with any of these issues. Now, if you ever smoked or even if you're not showing symptoms, if you want to make sure that your heart and your lungs are are where they ought to be for $149. They are offering a couple's heart and lung scan at Craft Body Scan during the month of October. I've done this. It's easy. Like I say, CT scan takes about five minutes. 
and they can detect even the slightest irregularity. You know what I got? I got a lot of good news. Lungs good. Heart in the top 10 percentile. I mean, everything looking A-OK. -okay, and that gives me peace of mind. Empower yourself to live your healthiest life. Visit Craft, spell it with a C, CraftBodyScan.com. That's CraftBodyScan.com. Or 615-436-1000. 436-1000.
201. I'm Mac Morey with your top stories right now. What? 73 degrees in Nashville. Complete weather forecast just a few minutes away. Continuing coverage on the Israel-Hamas war with Michelle Franson. Twelve days after Hamas terrorists killed at least 1,400 across Israeli villages, President Biden visited Israel in a show of unwavering U.S. support. The president also cautioning Israel to do all it can to prevent casualties as it battles Hamas in Gaza. Airstrikes have led to more than 3,400 Palestinian deaths so far, and a bombing yesterday at a hospital in Gaza has sparked protests across the Mideast. President Biden says he is outraged and saddened by the loss of life at the hospital in Gaza and reiterated the U.S. assessment that Israel was not responsible. Based on the information we've seen to date, it appears a result of an errant rocket fired by a terrorist group in Gaza. A spokesperson for the National Security Council going further in a statement saying that while the U.S. continues to collect information, that current assessment is based on analysis of overhead imagery, intercepts, and open source information. And as the war rages on in Israel and Gaza, tensions are rising here at home. Students carrying Palestinian banners at a rally in Texas say they hide their identities out of fear of their names, schools, phone number, and address will be put online and spread. And right now in the nation's capital, still no consensus on who will be the next Speaker of the House after lawmakers fail to get the 217 votes needed for anyone. Republicans, who are in the majority, failed to vote yes on Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Jordan received 22 no votes when he can afford to lose only four votes. Jay O'Brien says that lawmakers will now discuss Jordan behind closed doors. Every time there has been one of these conference meetings, Republicans have emerged from behind those closed doors with deeper dis- divisions in some cases than when they went behind those closed doors. They're that uh, In a conference meeting is when Steve Scalise was first nominated, and then it was in a conference meeting not long after that he dropped out, and then it was in a conference meeting that Jim Jordan was nominated. Then they had a conference meeting at the beginning of this week to try to get all the holdout votes back in the boat and support Jim Jordan. In crime right now in Tennessee, an alleged girlfriend has been charged with the murder of her boyfriend that happened in August. Police say that 18-year-old Arleth Bonilla called the 17-year-old victim several times before he was murdered. The shooting happened at an apartment in Madison, and Bonilla is alleged to have recorded homicide investigators on the scene and then sent them to the shooting suspect. That's the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Mac Morey, WTN News. Hey, folks, Matt Murphy here for United Structural Systems. Uh, uh, home ownership is a difficult thing for a lot of reasons, right? I mean, there's a lot of things that come up. The last thing that you want to deal with are structural issues within your home. I'll tell you a quick story that happened to me in Birmingham. Man, I wish I knew USS at the time, although I got it handled, but I did not get it handled for the amount of money that it would have cost me with USS. I'm talking concrete leveling in the poly lift system. So I noticed that I had cracks in my driveway, and some of those cracks were becoming issues because they were 
you know, they were sinking. I mean, literally portions of my driveway started sinking on me. And that's when I made the call that I encourage you to make. Call USS. I wish I'd known them at the time because they use a poly lift uh, concrete leveling system that is less expensive than concrete replacement. Gives you higher load capacity than traditional approaches such as mud jacking. No damage to grass, no damage to landscaping. And you can walk on it immediately and drive on it in 30 minutes. I've seen this system work. It is incredible to watch how they lift your concrete back up into place using that polylift foam. It's incredible. We don't talk about it enough. So if you have driveway cracks or problems within your driveway and you think they're just going to get worse, call the experts. Call USS. USS, they guarantee their best. 615-488-7855, 488-7855, or USSTN.com. That's USSTN.com. It is 207 Super Talk 997 WTN, the Matt Murphy Show. Thank you for being here until 3 o'clock this afternoon. We'll talk with Brian Wilson coming up later on in the hour about what's going on on the drive from 3 until 7. Information fueled, opinion driven. 615 737 9986. If you'd like to be a part of the show, you're certainly invited. We're anticipating at some point or another. A, another vote for speaker, number three this time round. There was a second vote held earlier today, and if you're just joining us on the show and don't know the results of that, those are the results. No speaker of the House. White smoke or black... Is it white smoke or black smoke? Is it white smoke or black smoke? When the Pope. The Pope? Black means no. There you go. Yeah. Cameron Smith is with us. He writes for the Tennessee, and occasionally he stops by and opines on the issues of the day on the Matt Murphy Radio Show. Sometimes you hear him here, and believe it or not, I've survived your establishment rhinoism. How? I don't know, mm. but I have. I don't know. I got stinky on me because of you, though, last time around. Yeah, I've, I, you know, I've heard of that. Mm -hmm. You should get that checked out. Uh, we're also talking about the ethics or the lack thereof of theft. Yeah. Uh, Walmart's got a big problem, and by extension, Sam's Club. And some of these other companies that are utilizing self-checkout, they're recognizing that there's a there's peril yeah, of course. in that because there are a lot of people that are completely unethical and willing to steal things and claim that they paid for them or just not be bothered uh, by that. But really, it, it occurs to me that I have two calls on the line. Line one is Clark. He wants to talk about the Bible. Okay. Line two is David. He wants to talk about the rapture. Line three and four want to talk about theft. So we're really... All the Bible. We're talking about the Bible. We're talking about, you know, some of the basic tenets of a good society. Like, I don't know, thou shalt not steal. Yeah, don't do that thing. Don't do the thing that'll hurt the other people. Uh, so we'll continue along those lines. Before we do, though, just give me your, you know, your 25 cent view on the speaker's race right now. It's never good when you go in the wrong direction on the second vote. If you have a third vote where you go, he went 200, 199, if he keeps going in the wrong direction he's done you gotta you gotta pick up momentum and i just think right here to, to put some mind at ease i just don't see a coalition government that a coalition speaker where concessions are made to democrats i do see a world where 10 or 15 democrats come over without concessions for a patrick mchenry or somebody like that in hopes that They'll be reasonable, and they'll have a better chance of winning the House. They'll be looked at, perceived as a calming agent in yeah. the sea of chaos. Remember that red wave that didn't happen? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because there are a lot of swings, swing district Democrats that held their seats. And so they're thinking, you know what? I've been holding with Hakeem Jeffries, but if I cross over for a speaker that's not objectionable to my voters— I look like I'm a, I, I am America first. I look like I'm a deal maker. I'm conciliatory, which in swing districts does really well. Well, you'd go against leadership to do that, right? No. Leadership would let them. Yeah, but if I want to primary you, if I'm a Democrat, I mean, the same thing holds for conservatives as liberals, Not right? Not nearly as much as, well, look, they would get primaried for voting for Jim Jordan. They're not going to get primaried for voting for Patrick McHenry. Does that make sense? Like, Jim Jordan absolutely draws a primary for a Democrat. No, you primary them for voting for a Republican. 
Yeah. At I, that point. You, you might could, but in a lot of these. It doesn't hold the same. It doesn't hold the same. And they're general election districts and they know it, right? Well, look, I maintain that conservatives, the more conservative or, you know, what, whatever you want to call it, MAGA wing of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives was told to hold their nose and vote for McCarthy. And they didn't for a hot minute. And they got some concessions and eventually did. Sure. And. We were led to where we are because he didn't get all of those votes on the appropriations bill. I mean, Matt Gates and his little cohorts would not have had a leg to stand on had they gotten the appropriations votes over to the Senate. Yeah. Is that fair? I think they still would have done it. I'm mean, I'm serious. I think for Matt Gates, this was heavily personal axe to grind with McCarthy. Thought you but know what? Nobody, but Burchett doesn't go with him. Maybe not, but he's still. You don't need all eight. No, you need, but you need four, right? And I think he probably could have gotten four well, that are like I hate well, Kevin he, McCarthy. He didn't get Bobert. I mean, he didn't get some of the usual MTG, Marjorie Taylor Green. All right, he, he didn't get, well, but regardless, I mean, we are where we are yeah. because of those things. Now, my my point has been okay. It's time for the moderates in the Republican Party to give a little to get something. Yeah. And I don't think that Jim Jordan is that mentally insane that he can't be the Speaker of the House, and some people are suggesting that. No, and I, this is coming from me, who gladly, I, I'm a conservative, don't care if your name is Establishment name Rhino. You can call me whatever you want. <laughs> I, I want to win. I want to actually win in the real world versus on Fox News, right? And so I'm fine with Jim Jordan. But my my the realization is the same logic that applied to the eight – and then the folks that bounce Scalise, then to say, well, now you must play ball. Well, no, they they don't have to. They respond to their voters. And if they think their voters and the districts they represent don't want Jim Jordan, then why would they not listen to him? So instead, they get what? Well, I'm just saying they're all the same level of cul culpability. I don't believe I don't I don't believe for a second that's what they're holding out for. I think they're holding out for something. So, I mean, whether it's RNC money. Money for their political campaigns, a promise Maybe. to raise money, a chairmanship. They want something on the side. I think all of this is side hustle. I, I believe that. It might be, but I think they just really don't like Jim Jordan, too. And I, it, Well, but since when, and I, I know I'm yelling at you, I shouldn't, but, I mean, this is what we do on occasion. Yeah, sure. Since when is liking a dude a qualification to be Speaker of the House? I mean, 200 of your fellow Republicans yeah. have decided that this is who they want to lead the body. And so you're telling me that some schmuck from Oklahoma goes, well, I just didn't like him. Well, grow up. You're not in junior high school. Right. So why why is that any different than the first two times we did this? Because Matt Matt Gates got actual concessions. You you can call him a child all you want, but he got okay. the one vote to, to uh, for motion to vacate the chair. I don't, I, I don't know what happened with Scalise. He Except could, that Scalise was too tied to McCarthy? Scalise got the majority of the conference, and then the folks said, we're going to vote Jim Jordan on the floor, and it doesn't matter. And he was like, well, then what's the point? That's what happened. I mean, Scalise could be up for the nomination now. He chose to remove yeah, his I, name, I, right? I agree. He could, but this J Jordan's strategy, which I think is the right strategy for Jordan if he wants to be speaker, is we're just going to keep voting on me until you guys give up. I just think the bullying and the, like, tough tweets and stuff. You know what McCarthy did? Well, in terms of the, the speaker's I mean, that, that, race. I mean, yeah. I mean, that, that he, he tried to do that, and then eventually he he realized he had to get a backroom deal going after, like, the 10th vote. Well, right. He made concessions, right? right? So what are the concessions going to be towards those 20? I don't know. Are we going to? I don't know what they want. But, that, but watch this. Watch this. So imagine that he says, well, uh, here's the the... We'll, we'll vote. We'll put Ukraine funding on the floor. He automatically loses because the moment he makes that deal, Gates and Co's like, see ya, dude. Right. So you see at the very least, I knew what Gates and his cabal wanted. They they had a very they had a list of demands. Sure. That they wanted. They regular wanted a order. regular order, yeah. a separate appropriations bills, yep. you know, the one the one vote to make a motion to vacate, all of that. Sure. They, I don't know what these 20 want. Maybe it's too early in the process to know. Well, I guess we're coming up on vote three. We still got 12 left. So. <laughs> or or, but, but my or point 28 is, or like, 40. Guys, I get the hostage taking and all the stuff. Like, it's part of politics. I, I'm not that upset about it. It's just a matter of, like, dear Republicans. Like, I'm just saying, like, Jim Jordan is fine. Like, the, the dynamics don't change 
The Democrats still hold, hold the Senate and hold the White House. So, like, whether it's super conservative Jim Jordan or Kevin McCarthy or Steve Scalise, it's not going to well, make a huge difference. My biggest fear is not that Jim Jordan is not going to be Speaker. I think Jim Jordan will be Speaker of the House sooner rather than later. My biggest fear is that we're setting ourselves up for a great disappointment because for some reason people are becoming are coming to believe that a real conservative guy as speaker would have some sort of magical powers right. that other speakers don't have. Well, this is what's going to and I will tell you again, this is what's going to happen. I've said it on multiple times on the radio. This is taking too long. So we're going to get to a point where either we're shutting down the government yeah. or not. And then Jim Jordan has already you, said, I'm not supportive of the shutdown politics. And then he's going to say, well, we've got to do an omnibus. And then and vacate, people are going to freak out. Vacate the chair now. So what I said yesterday was that whatever happens from here on out, the conservative people that are listening to me better be willing to give Jim Jordan a little grace for the first several months. Right. You got to give him grace because he's coming in to a situation not of his making that is a very bad deal. It is next to him. And I don't like that it's the case, but it is the case. And we're talking is, until February. Right. It is next to impossible for him to expect to have eight appropriations bills to the Senate and then have the Senate approve all 12 of them back to the House before the 45-day window rolls out. Yeah. That was almost impossible when the 45-day window started, and that was what? Yeah. Two weeks ago? Yeah. We're, we're running weeks out ago? of time. It doesn't work. The math doesn't work on how long this stuff takes. I've been in the Hill. I can tell you. And, it and, takes a minute. And and it's because of what we asked for, what the Gates wing asked for. And, just under, and I'm all about it. But regular order takes longer. It's harder. Mm -hmm. That's why they stopped doing it. It's why we haven't done it really consistently for, like, decades. Right. <laughs> because regular order gives schmoes like representative cameron smith or representative matt murphy the right. opportunity to offer amendments on the floor and then you have to deal with those amendments and, on and the floor. it gives you the opportunity to say i don't like that one and so and then you got to start all over right you, you know you, you you get pieces of government which is the way it should be it's a good idea and, but you, that's why that's why i was never against removing mccarthy because McCarthy knew what he promised yeah and he didn't deliver it and, and, and i know that i'm fine with that and i, I mean, know he thought he could but you cannot escape that you went away for six weeks. But when the conservative grassroots folks say, you know what, we're going to keep vacating the chair until you stop on an omnibus. Or, I'm like, give, you got to give Steve Scalise till the next budget cycle. You got to get through this one however you get through it. And then if he doesn't do regular order, fine. Like, okay. But like, the, you can't just say, we're going to burn it down right now. That's not going to work. It's, this is Jim Jordan. You should not, a conservative should not vacate the chair if he becomes speaker, which I think that's a big if now. You should not have an immediate motion to vacate the chair. He's he is literally the most conservative person that has a possible chance. Period. I would agree with that, but I don't think his personal conservatism or his voting record will impact the manner in which he has to conduct business in the body. Except that we expect regular order and these sorts of things. You cannot expect that until the beginning of the new. But they're going to expect cycle. Jim Jordan to be a bomb thrower. Guess what? The Speaker of the House doesn't is have never that, a bomb thrower. Has, doesn't have that luxury. Jim Jordan knows that. Newt Gingrich is probably the last conservative individual that held the gavel that accomplished key significant things as Speaker of the House as a conservative Republican. Because he's a good policy guy. Because he is a smart policy yeah. wonk, which is why I was supportive of our buddy Gary Palmer becoming yeah. the next speaker. But, of course, uh, Gary said that God would have to tell him. A, he told me that. I don't know if he said the same thing to you. Is that God would have to speak to him really loud and clear before he would ever go there. Um, that said, Newt had to navigate the waters even with a Republican majority in the House. Yes. And he didn't get everything he wanted with a contract with America. He got and, a lot of and it. that's what this, like, th this is what the grifter class that I talked about keeps selling. It's a lie that you're going to get Jim Jordan, and Jim Jordan gets to wave a magic wand and give you all the things you want immediately. That's ignorant. It doesn't work that way. And so Jim's got to build a coalition in the House to get it out of the House and then negotiate with the Senate to make things law. I just want someone with a modicum of physical, it's only two syllables, responsibility holding the gavel. And I think you get that with Jim Jordan. Amen. And and that 
But that doesn't mean that we balance the budget next year. But I can get that with Bruce Westerman. I can get it with a lot of House members. The idea that Jim Jordan is the last stand for a Republican, a conservative Republican speaker is just not true. He's a name. He's a firebrand. We've seen him. I think that the conservatives listening to us trust him. Yeah. And I trust him, too. Sure. That he's an honest actor in all of this. And he's trying to get us to a place where we think we need to go to sure. get back to some semblance of normalcy. We'll see. Clark. And David want, uh, David probably feels like the rapture is going to come before I get to his phone if he call. Got, if David got raptured and sent back, he's got a bigger problem. I mean, but he's sitting there going, I don't know which happens first. Does he come to me or does the rapture happen? We'll find out next on the Super Talk 99.7 WTN. The Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief is located in Franklin. Anywhere within the sound of my voice, if you're experiencing pain on your body, right, whether it's uh, spinal in nature, whether it's chiropractic in nature, or if you feel like it's inflammation and whatnot, if, you, if it's knee pain, if it's elbow pain, if it's neck pain, if it's back pain, wherever it hurts, the Dr. Gill Center for Back, Neck, and Chronic Pain Relief can assist you. I want you to make the call that so many others have made. I want you to say pain relief to the folks that answer the phone. Tell them my name, Matt Murphy. Matt Murphy told me to call you and say pain relief. You get a special discount on your initial visit to the Dr. Gill Center, which is pretty cool. 615-882-4838. That's the Murphy discount by saying pain relief. When you call 615-882-4838. Go and see these folks today and live a pain-free life moving forward without the need for pills and without the consideration for surgery. It's the Dr. Gill Center for back, neck, and chronic pain relief in Franklin. An update in Gaza and still no consensus on who the next Speaker of the House will be. That and more 230 Super Talk 997 WTN. Found me a place. You guys know I'm kind of looking around. I'm renting right now in lovely Mount Juliet. By the way, 225 Super Talk 997 WTN. A buddy of mine 
regular listener to the Murphy Show on Super Talk ninety nine seven WTN sent me a um, sent me a nice place. It's in Franklin, Tennessee. I don't know that I've ever heard of that. On Highway ninety six, you've never heard of Franklin. Sits on uh, really sits on uh, sits on three hundred eighty three acres. It's ten thousand square feet, nine uh, five bedrooms, nine baths. Ten point five million. You know, it's funny. I asked Cameron. I covered up the price and I showed him the picture of this and I asked him to guess how much this would be. And he, what did you guess? Fifteen. Fifteen million. He guessed fifteen million. Sixty-five million dollars. The estimate. <laughs> the estimated monthly mortgage payment, which is funny to me that you would pay sixty-five. Like, would I have a mortgage payment? No, like, if don't. I can the afford, answer is no. But the estimated monthly mortgage is. Um, Four hundred twenty-two thousand eight hundred ninety-seven dollars a month. Can you imagine having to write a check that big every month? I'm just no, imagining it would, be on, it would be on auto draft. Hey, <laughs> hey, yeah. bank! I'm going to be a little short this month. It's a little tough. By about four hundred twenty thousand dollars, that's going to be a little tough for me. Uh, anyway, as promised, we'll get to a few of your telephone calls. Plus, I'm going to ask Cameron Smith to offer us a spirited review of the musical Wicked, mm -hmm. which apparently he has been to. Uh, I mention this merely that my conservative listeners can add this to the list of reasons to hate Cameron. Thank you. Thank You're you. You're welcome. In the meantime, David, I hope you've not been taken up. How are you, David? How are you, how, How's it going in Lebanon? Yeah, I'm going pretty good. How you doing, buddy? I'm well, man. Um, I watched a documentary the other night, and, and nobody knows... Uh, when the rapture is going to happen. But I watched a documentary the other night, and it made perfectly made perfect sense. And I pretty much believe it. Um, they contend that it, 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 and it says in the Bible, he will come like a thief in the night. Yes. Well, it's going to happen like a wedding. If he goes to Walmart first, he's going to get some great stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it, it's going to happen like a wedding. He doesn't. He, he tells us at the last dinner, he tells his disciples that he will go and fix a place for them. Now, back in, I can't remember that, that uh, I can't remember the, where the, the people came from, but it was a very specific. Specific um, religion only they have. Once they got married, they split up. The man, the groom, would go back to his father's home, and the bride would go back to her mother's home and father's home, and they would have a year. In that period, the groom would fix their home and get it ready for the bride. Okay. And when the bride, when the groom got done. Only the father of the groom would tell him when the time was, when it was time for him to go get his bride. It was always in the middle of the night. Jesus told his disciples, I am going to fix a place for you to come to. Sure. Not him to come to them, but for them to come to him. Well, connect the dots for me a little bit. Like, help me understand where we're going. The rapture will happen in the middle of the night. He will come in the thief of the night. All right. The, the the watch. Look this up before the wrath. Watch it. It's a documentary. It makes perfect sense. Before the wrath. And if the before the wrath. Okay. And, and if the wrath would have came before you got me online, hey, it'd been all good because I've been with my Lord. Well, well I been just bad if he came back though. Yeah, it's true. If you're still around, maybe I wasn't here. Thank you, David, for the call. Um, I don't know. I know my understanding of my faith is that if you live right every day, then you're not really concerned about the last day. Well, does that my, make sense? The, as a Christian, the Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. That's Romans 10 9. And so. I think it's easy to get caught up in sort of the end time stuff. You know what I mean? Well, this comes up, and I, I'm 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 trying to be respectful, respectful of the conversation. 
but I promise you, it comes up every time tensions flare up in the Middle East. I get the telephone calls telling me, well, the Bible says that the end of times will happen as a result of war in the Middle East and Israel, and I get the 70-year thing, and I get all of it. And, you know, the first time that I heard the generational thing, which is roughly 70 years, it was when Israel was like 62. And I was told, well, they're not going to get to 70 before the, well, and now they're like 73. So now they're up. So yeah, I, I, and I'm not suggesting that biblical prophecy is not something that we should engage, but the caller was right that like, it's coming back like a thief in the night. That does, that means you don't know. Like that mean that by definition is you cannot calculate the moment, and so you can say this is troubling, but I I don't I don't subri- subscribe to this. Well, it's the end time now, definitely this time. While we're on the subject hmm. of of this, well, I tell you what, I'm not going to do it because it would it would take us off on the rails. I've decided <laughs> against it. Okay. I was going to ask you a question about simulation theory, but hmm. I've decided not to. Do you know what simulation theory is? is- I've just become familiar with simulations. It's like the Matrix? Basically. Yeah. Is that that the, like Elon Musk is a believer of simulation theory. That it is more likely that humankind or something resembling humankind has gotten to a point where all of this is a simulation than it is that this is not. Sure. Because that's where we're moving. But, but wouldn't we make it better? No, not necessarily. I mean, I've I've actually much like the Matrix. Maybe we tried to make it perfect and it didn't work. Yeah. Well, I just hope I'm comfortable in my little cocoon, floating in some jelly. <laughs> we'll be back. Two thirty-two. I'm Mac Mori with your top stories right now. Seventy-two degrees, a sunny day on Music Row. Full weather forecast in two minutes. As Hezbollah leaders calling for another day of rage following the destruction of a hospital in Gaza today, a number of clashes occurred outside the American embassy in Beirut today, leading up to a violent confrontation between the military and the demonstrators. Mullah Lenghi is in Beirut with more. Protesters uh, showed up outside the U.S. Embassy throwing rocks, launching fireworks, not only at the embassy, but at Lebanese military. A few dozen of them were helping protect the American compound there. Uh, Those soldiers firing uh, rubber bullets and tear gas uh, at the protesters, beating them back uh, with batons. Uh, Dozens of people were injured in this, what was about an hour-long standoff. Right now in the nation's capital, still no consensus on who will be the next Speaker of the House after lawmakers fail to get the 217 votes needed for anyone. Republicans, who are in the majority, failed to vote yes on Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. Jordan received 22 no votes. He can only afford to lose four votes. Indiana Congresswoman Victoria Sparts says she flipped her vote from a no to a yes because she wants the party to unite, but she also says that she doesn't think it's a good idea to hold floor votes on who should be speaker. Speaker is not elected by the public for a reason, because you serve your member membership. You need to develop relationship and resolve grievances without attacks and intimidation. Kevin McCarthy was vacated for that reason, because he forced people to the floor. And that is the latest news. Weather's next. I'm Mac Mori, WTN News. I love, I've never met Dr. Ashley Lucas, but I, I love Dr. Ashley Lucas. I can say that because I've lost 36 and a half pounds and I'm well on my way to my goal weight. I love what PhD weight loss is doing for me. I love the fact that I have a counselor, a dietitian, a nutrition every week that I speak with. 
Uh, Rachel and I talk on a weekly basis, and she helps us support me in my journey. She's there for me. She's not there to guilt trip me. She's not there to, you know, query me about what you did do and what you didn't do. She's there for support. She's there to help help you jump the pitfalls, uh, jump the gaps, uh, and help support you in your weight loss journey because ultimately it is your journey. You and your dietitian set up your goal. And if you don't get within five pounds of that goal by your target into the program, they'll continue to coach you for free until you do. They're there to support you at PhD. That's their PhD guarantee. Most men lose between three and five pounds a week. Women between two and three pounds a week. Visit myphdweightloss.com today. That's myphdweightloss.com to find out the PhD difference. And I know that they can help you lose the weight that you've wanted to get off through PhD weight loss. Man, the conversation is getting deep. I need to pull up. Pull I feel like we're in the airplane. Ever heard this video? Pull up. Pull up. Am, am, am. Cameron Smith and I talking about simulation theory and a lot of different other things during the break. It's 240 on Super Talk 99.7 WTN. Matt Murphy, you, Cameron Smith. We'll talk with Brian Wilson coming up in just a moment. No resolution to the Speaker of the House debacle. Is that That's the word that came to mind. Um, conflagration, <laughs> hijinks. 
here's shenanigans. The, this is true of all things political. You need to have a plan when you do a thing. And I get what Gates was saying, and I haven't argued with you that the idea of, hey, McCarthy created the conditions for his own demise. Okay, cool. But what was the plan? And I've all along said, let's get a more, more conservative policy outcomes and a stronger House majority. Give me that, and I'll be happy. Based on the conversation that you and I just had off air? The plan is out there. It's already predetermined. It is predetermined and decided, and it's right. just a dominoes are waiting right. to fall. Right. It's just a matter of us not understanding the dominoes nor knowing when or where they're going to fall, but they're going to fall one way or the other. Yeah. I just, so we shouldn't worry about it so much. I'm not worried. I just really would like Republicans to figure this out, and it's kind of embarrassing right now. Yeah, it doesn't bode well for 2024, at least at this we stage. We can Plenty govern kind of. Time. Plenty of time. Actually, I kind of like it. I mean, they're not really wasting a lot of money right now as much as they could be. I mean, they're not going to consider this $100 billion that Joe Biden has decided he wanted for to take advantage of the Israel situation. Israel not asking for more money, but America giving it anyway, despite the fact that we already give $3.3 billion to Israel on an annual basis. And that happen happens on a reoccurring basis, regardless of whether they vote for it or not. Thank you to Marco Rubio. Yeah, how much is intelligence in the Middle East worth to us? That's the question. That's the interest. I don't think it's worth $100 billion, especially when they tie Ukrainian money in there and some other things. All right, we'll blow through some of these. Clark has been waiting for a while. Clark, thank you for your patience. Good afternoon, Clark. The floor is yours, sir. I do appreciate your time, sir. Yes, thank sir. For taking the call, as always. Of course. Um, I listen to you quite often, not every day, but... <clears throat> I just wanted to mention something about the rapture and in a few statements, if I can. And if you need to shut me up, you can. Um, there are usually about three teachings on the rapture. One is pre-rapture, or I'm sorry, pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib. That's tribulation. The Bible talks about, in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16, about Christ coming back in the clouds and gathering up the church. Those that are dead will rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us which are alive, which means believers in Christ, will be called up to meet with him in the, in the clouds. That begins the rap. That begins the tribulation. After 42 months begins the great tribulation. Now, I heard a caller a while ago said Christ will come at night. We have no idea. We just know that nothing else has to happen for Christ to return. That is my belief. And it's not by what we do. It's about what he did for us on that cross. Sure. That's, that's what I believe. And I'm not calling to stir up arguments or any of that. I, I'm just telling you what I believe and why I believe. Well, I, I appreciate that. And, and I'm not here to tell people what to believe or what not to believe. And I'm not taking any more calls on the rapture or the end of times. Because this invariably gets us to a place where my career is jeopardized. Well, I mean, we don't. And want I become so. I mean, look, I, we are not a biblical show. I am not prepared to have reasonable theological conversations regarding the rapture, nor do I want to, uh, because it would involve faith based discussions in which people get mad at one another. And I don't think there's any good that comes of that. But when, oh, I know what's going to happen. I know, I know, I know. I, 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 don't, I don't want to do anything. Plus, I put your show at risk every day. It's like, why pile on? Well, that's. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't mean to be disrespectful. I'm, I don't mean no, to I sound think you're disrespectful. Being very respectful. I'm not by trying doing to sound. That. I mean, the, the reason that I took several of these calls is because some. The way that this came up, if you're just joining us, someone called us and said, "Look, what's happening in the Middle East is an example of how the rapture is about to come, and the end of times is in front of us." And then that led to a lot of these calls. Um, for my, me, my take on it is okay. Like, I, I'm not going to argue with you. I, it's that's you're, cool. You're, what, you're, it's your you tell me what your you, when you think this stuff is going to happen. Great. I I know that we got a huge problem over there right now. We need to address it based on the tools available to us now. And so, what concerns me about some of that stuff is people throwing up their hands and saying, "Well, the end times are nigh." 
Hold on. Right. I, I am not comfortable with just letting it happen based on the idea that we think right. that biblical prophecy dictates that it has to happen in order to get to the end times. Certainly not. I'm uncomfortable with pil- people killing other people because they want to kill other people. Yes. I am comfortable with people defending themselves because there are people that want to kill them. Just as I would be in my own home or in my own neighborhood or in my home state adopted as it may be of Tennessee. Yeah, well, ter- this is the whole point of terrorism has no justification. Like nothing you can tell me about any cause anywhere ever justifies shooting a baby in the head. Correct. Period. That, this isn't complicated. And I, I, I will say this is where I'm lit on this stuff is watching so many apologists for terrorism. Mm-hmm. They're saying, but you That's don't what un- they're doing. But you don't understand the plight of the Palestinians. No, the Palestinians are not served by Hamas. Their plight, their two-state solution, whatever it is, not served by well, Hamas. And, 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 and what I would say to them is, tell me what you mean by free Palestine. I'm listening. Right? Because when the people in the Gaza Strip, the last time they had an opportunity to vote on all this, they didn't vote for the Palestinians. The Palestinian Authority lost the election in the Gaza Strip to Hamas. Yes. Because the Palestinian Authority was in agreement with the two-state solution. The, the the people that lead the West Bank, the government of the West Bank, they don't have a problem with the two-state solution. Ta-ta. Hamas has a problem with the two-state solution. Their mission statement is to kill the Jews and eliminate Israel. Yes. And my thing, and I don't know if you've heard it, is either there are far fewer... Like we're told, well, the Palestinian people don't believe in what Hamas is doing. Sure. Well, then why are they not looking at, at the IDF as liberators then? Right? Wouldn't if they don't want Hamas to be their governmental leadership, which they currently are for what it's worth in Gaza, they're right. not very good at it. No. And they never have been. They're good at killing things. Primarily because Jews. They're terrorists. Right. Because not they're governing terrorists. officials. So you either are right that most of these two million Palestinians don't agree with any of this. They just want to live in peace. Well then they look at the IDF as liberators then, because they're gonna eliminate Hamas. And bring you the government that you claim to want. Or or maybe, just maybe, a lot of the Palestinians agree with Hamas. And, and those in Gaza may. I know there's a million kids there, and they don't have a lot of say. I get and that. And so that's a different animal. But that's the reason I'm careful to, like, break between the children and the adults. Because Hamas was elected. And they're a terrorist organization. They have... They have not done anything to stabilize Gaza. In fact, they have been a destabilizing force. And I there are Hamas supporters. There just there just are. Now it may not be the majority, but there are people, adults there who support Hamas. I just don't for the life of me, I don't get an answer when I ask the question, what do you mean when you say free Palestine? Because Palestine doesn't exist as a state. I understand that its people feel homeless or countryless. There was a concept of a two-state solution that Israel fought against for a long time, but they came around to in the 1990s. 1993, they agreed. In the Oslo Accords, they agreed to the two-state solution. They gave Yasser Arafat 98% of the land concessions that he wanted, and they asked one thing in return, that you demilitarize the Palestinians so that they don't keep killing Jews. And Yasser Arafat refused. So, well, this is what's happening. I mean, let's be honest about what's happening now. I got to call him out on this, that with Egypt, Egypt has, has that border control. The Rafa crossing to the south has border control, could absolutely be a pressure release valve here and take these folks in. You know what? They fought radical Islamic terrorists in the Sinai Peninsula. And so they're like, you know, we don't really want these folks flooding across our border because they're terrorists. Right. They're fe- the fellow Arabs in the region will not take them. Because Hamas has made these people toxic. Right. Like, that's that's the truth. Right. That's it's, sad, but You true. guys are embedded yeah. in these yeah. people. We don't have a good way of separating you out. That's what Israel knows, too. There's not a good way of being like, huh, this is clearly the guy that we need to shoot, and this one is not. Sounds like our southern border to a certain degree. Mm. There's a lot of good people that are just wanting work coming mm-hmm. across the southern border, and there are then some some bad people that want to do bad things like traffic human beings or drugs or even worse. 
God forbid. It is 2.50. We'll check in with Brian Wilson coming up in a moment. For those I didn't get to, God bless you. I appreciate you. I will get back to more calls tomorrow as we begin to wind down our portion of the broadcast day and head to the drive with Brian Wilson. We'll check in with Brian next.
Not a moment too soon. I feel like Dan Mandis on a Friday. I am tired. I need Brian Wilson to take it up and run with it. Take the ball and run with it, my friend. <laughs> Brian Wilson is with us to talk about what's going on in the drive. How are you, Brian? Well, I'm I'm doing very well. A, a gorgeous day today, and I, I, you know, it was one of those days where I actually thought about moving the show outside. I, that would have been a great deal of fun, I think. But uh, you know, uh, why no, don't we, you we, should broadcast from the pool on occasion? Well, you know, I I have that ability. I have a, a portable rig that that I uh, sometimes take out on remotes and what have you. And uh, yeah, I could do that someday, or maybe just part of the show. Maybe that we'll do that sometime. But uh, right that now, would be nice. It would be nice. Maybe yeah, you know what? Maybe. We have a Speaker of the House, and you have a celebration once we have a Speaker of the House. It might be way too cold by the time that happens because I fear yeah. we might be weeks away from it. What's your analysis of what went down today? We went in the wrong direction, Brian. Well, we're going to talk about that right off the top of the of the show this, this afternoon. Uh, we're also going to have Andy Ogles checking in. He's going to give us the lay of the land. Uh, I think he was on this morning with Dan, but he that was before the vote happened. And as you know, it was a... <laughs> Womp, 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 Massive womp. fail. Uh, no, uh, we no longer, we still don't have a House uh, Speaker, and we don't have a functional House of Representatives. And, you know, the question is, well, how do we get out of this mess we're in? How do we find a way out? What's what's the what's the plan? Well, I guess we're up, what are we, Plan C now? What's Plan D? And uh, I don't know. And, I mean, I, I would assume that it ends up, I mean, we, we all make the assumption that eventually it ends up as Speaker Jordan, but when you're going the wrong direction... Who knows? Yeah. Well, you know, Scalise, when he started to go the wrong direction, he decided to back out. I, I think I think Jordan still has a chance to seal the deal, but uh, he's got to get 18 out of 22 votes that he doesn't have right now, and that, that's going to be a real heavy lift. So we'll, we'll watch it. We'll talk to Andy Ogles here in just a minute. There he is, Brian Wilson. He's coming up with the drive right after Mac Morey's news at the top of the hour for four full hours of talk radio excellence. We'll be listening, and I hope that you are as well. We're back tomorrow uh, for a Thursday edition of the Matt Murphy Show on Super Talk. Until then, Brady. hug your loved ones. Be quiet. You be quiet. You're not a loved one. No hugs for Bell because of that. I was going to come in there and hug you. Now you get nothing, and you'll like it on Super Talk 99.7 WTN.